Hello, Knights. Welcome to another episode of Pendragon. Uh, it is the second half of the year 488. We are back. We're back from PAX Unplugged. Uh, we're back from everything, uh, except for the holidays are coming up, too. So, what was us? But anyways, we're here. Uh, we're ready, ready to rock and roll. Colin, how are you doing? You're muted again, Colin. God damn. Uh, I'm fine. I'm great. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm excited to be back uh, riding into the Franklin to earn earn some more spurs. I've earned my spurs. Now I want more spurs. Many spurs. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, easily. You know, if, if we've got to come back with a lot of just uh, Carolingian just noblemen. We've got to ransom them. There needs to be all sorts of uh, feats of daring do. I am vowed to never make another passion roll during a feast. <laughs> and that is the only remember. note I have left myself after last time we played. <laughs> I'm hoping. Uh, what are the what are the what are the Frankish version of, of Saxons? Who are, who are they fighting down there? Saxons. So Saxons. 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 Okay. Saxons. <laughs> They're still Saxons. Yeah. The Saxons are in Denmark right now. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and uh, the, the Netherlands. Utes. Utes. Yeah. They're, it's all just all Saxons all the way down. Yeah. Okay, well, or Utes. maybe I'll name my third kid after a Saxon that I, like, say is my life down here. I don't know. Yeah. It seems yeah. to be. Yeah, Colin, Ooh. remind us who we're playing, by the way. Yeah. Who you, who's your character? Uh, yes, I'm playing Sir Gareth the Hungry, uh, who's quickly developing um, an almost Macbeth demeanor, so... Yeah. I am playing uh, Sir Irwin, who is more like a tutorial character uh, than anything, but uh, currently is undergoing a bit of a... <laughs> I can't believe you described yourself as like a tutorial character. <laughs> tutorial <laughs> character. More like, uh, you know, he's undergoing a bit of a, you know, mid-century crisis, that kind of thing, as you do. Oh, yeah, totally. That makes perfect do. sense. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> So good. Okay, uh, so let's so again. Apologies for getting uh, a little bit of a late start, and and we're getting you know getting ready to go, but you know we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, so I have, as always, a poem or at least a snippet of a poem that I like to read for each session. And today's sessions uh, comes from uh, Gawain's tale from the Dragons of Britain, and it's a a vigil I keep upon this spot. Tis here I fell and doomed to rot. No funeral pyre is due to me. A last soldier, seemingly forgot. Because uh, we're doing some battles. We're doing. We're going to do some battles today. Yeah, I was going to say, is that going to? Which one of us is that going to be? Uh, right. Who knows? Uh, which of us is going to break the news? <clears throat> yeah. All right. So where we last left off, um, you all, you all had some some things to do back in spring, um, as well as summer. You all uh, went to. Uh, deal with a little uh, stopping a blood feud um, while you were doing that. Or a little bit before that, you ran into um, Praetor Syagrius, a uh, wandering VIP, I guess, of of the area, especially of you know the, the kingdom of Logos is writ large, just petitioning people to push his claim to um, go, uh, you know, make, um, make his home uh, back in on the continent his again, because he got kicked out. By, by the Visigoths, or the Gauls. I forget which one, whatever he calls them. Um, the Vandals. There we go. The Vandals. I remember who they were. So, uh, I don't think... Did we, in in the fiction, contextualize his claim as, like, oh, yeah, like, Rome is real, really is dead. Like, um... um I, I don't know where this... Decide. Okay, because I don't... I personally don't Rome's remember been dead for where 50, this is. Years. Rome fell well, there... in, like, 430... Or forty or something like that. Really? Like, so you're like fifty years out or so. Right? I thought it was ahead of us, not behind us. Okay. Uh, Four thirty six is the last one, but yeah, we've we've been ahead of it for a while now. I thought. Yeah. Okay. The all right. The Pendragon territory wise, yeah. So whether or not oh, you yeah, think yeah. this guy is just trying to harken back to something that's kind of hopeless, it's up to you all. But you met him, okay. and I want to reiterate when you all met him, just how like sagacious, sag sag the sagacity. And courage, Siagrius has. I was trying to do something with a alliteration there, and that just you, you did try. You got I tried. It. Okay, I was in meetings all day today. <laughs> Give me a break. So, so, anyways, yeah, this man is a uh, you know the very model of a modern major general. 
Um, he is very, very, very um, erudite, uh, clean cut, um, clearly a master tactician, a uh, great speaker. His men renown him. Yet he is out here begging for uh, audiences and money and stuff so he can sure. get his kingdom back, right? But he, he makes sure that he doesn't call himself a king because that's not the Roman way to do it. Right. So praetor or governor yeah, or praetor. something like that. Mm -hmm. Um I, I think it's interesting the contrast that this like Roman nobility has with this somewhat gruffer oh, um, yeah. landed gent like the we're knights, we are men of action, we're soldiers. He I got a very administrator uh, administrator feel from him. Not like he's just a bureaucrat, but like that he is a big picture guy and by our Very nature, different. us knights are kind of an in the trenches kind of yeah. folk. Exactly. He he seems like way above you, and but he has a relatable quality to himself. And he, a uh, numerous times when you are together, I just want to reiterate because maybe we didn't have enough time on or anything, but um. He felt very homely. Like it's very common for when you think of Rome to be extremely haughty and be like, "This is, you know, these, look at these barbarians, right? This is this is a zoo <laughs> over here, right? And uh, across the uh, the British Sea, this place is a zoo. Like everyone, Tacitus and Julius Caesar, everyone's like, this place is unnavigable. And all he has just nothing but nice things to say about this place. He's like, you know, this place is kind of charming. Uh, you know, these people here are a form of good stock. Uh, you know, they've they've really taken um, the best parts of Roman civilization. And he spent a lot of time, like, learning and classifying things. Remember, like, he had a bunch of books with botany and stuff in it, um, carrying a lot of the, the stuff back with him. Uh, so, like, he's he's pretty well-warned uh, and, and, and kind of wise. But, you know, let's, let's not worry about that right now. Let's stop yeah. talking about him. The game's about you two. <laughs> so, uh, you two... Uh, this is this is the middle of summer. Um, you have let's we're just gonna cut because I don't feel like picking up exactly where we left off. So you both received your orders um, via courier. Uh, you'll be joining the Earl and crossing the British Sea uh, in a, in the town of Hanton. Uh, Anton's a very ancient place. Uh, most notably, it is now called Southampton. You will be uh, watching. Uh, so, so this is where we pick up. Each of you have a small scene here if you want it. Uh, you are both watching your peasants return home from the first wheat harvest of the year. So not like actually the harvest, but like the first cutting down of the wheat because then it's got to dry for like whatever, you know, before you, you bring and turn into hay. Uh, but like it's the beginning of summer or like the midpoint of summer where this begins, right? Um, they're coming in. Uh, you see them kind of like trickling down from your manor and like, you know, coming all in their little uh, parade of, of folk. Um, the sky is beginning to be pretty dark. It's already been sunset. However, on the horizon there, you know, the you can see the the rumbles of a tempest coming forward for you. Um, you know, you uh, it's going to undoubtedly coat your manners in in heavy wind and rain in maybe like an hour or so. You know, like you've you've seen this before. It's just a summer storm. Um, but for right now, there's a calm, and uh, you're there with your your wife or your partner if you wanted to, or your your kid if you wanted to have. A little scene, you know, before you, you get ready to go right out for war the following morning. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think Sir Gareth is uh, on a nearby hill overlooking the main part of his his manor, and uh, he's got like uh, one of his kids, Acewin, uh, sort of in one arm, talking to this tiny human that can't talk back. Uh, and he explains, coo, coo, coo. he's like using his sword to like trace out the outline of where the, the his manner extends and where it is. And I, I want you to understand, child, and I'm going to tell you this many times in your life. The boundary is what's traced by the sword. The sword does not follow the boundary. I hope you learn that well, and I hope your soul traces far for this family. Coo, coo, coo. <laughs> Sucking his thumb right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, that's good. Um, so just for the record, uh, maybe I should point this out. Uh, there, there is a small little modern mod to the rules I want to do. A little, little, I think until they're seven years old, um, I feel like you each have a year, like these sort of scenes will help tell you at the end of the year uh, when they actually do become a knight, if they become a knight. Um, go ahead and like, set, rather than them starting at 10, tweak one of their stats to the thing that you think is appropriate, right? Up to like the year seven, because 
as a kid, you don't really get a choice of your personality. Your kids, your parents kind of dictate that. You're going to go to, you're, you're going to be a ballet dancer, kid, for the first seven, you know. Uh, so what, until they, they go off to become a page uh, in Sarum, where you lose control of them, um, this is this is your time to sort of impart some wisdom to them and some guidance. And uh, I think I think maybe um, maybe starting around year two or so, that's going to maybe become impressionistic or not. Right. Yeah. Anyways, just yeah. want you to know that that's I feel like that's a cool way of, of making sure you're. I'll make know that. Yeah. That's um that's that's the lessons as a parent you can give your kids. To prepare them for the life of a knight. Awesome. Yeah. So that's it. He's just talking to Acewin mostly about like. You're gonna go out there. You're gonna fuck shit up. You're gonna get. You're gonna build on what I've built. So help you, God, you tiny little baby. Yeah. Don't don't you take this from me. Yeah. <laughs> Worked so hard. For I this. am not my father. I'm better than my father, and you should be better than me. Or I have failed. Yeah. And like that, Lady Elaine is like, mm. stop talking to our baby that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you doing with Lady Elaine? Um. We have found a comfortable coldness, I think. Yeah. Uh, like, it's not affection yet, but I think Elaine has shifted from wanting me dead to take everything from me to, like, maybe you die, maybe you don't, but it's fun to see if I can kill you yeah. in a million little ways. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's... there's... This, like they don't little... like me, but they they're starting to like the game. <laughs> I think I think that's exactly it. Yeah, they're getting a little bit of a a joy that you are a, a more formidable opponent than than they thought. Uh, I think she unless so if that's I think that coldness comes off as uh, I think she spends most of her time in Wilton, in your little manor, or your little oh, city yeah. manor, right? Like she doesn't she I, doesn't she's not around too much, right? I think and I think the kids mostly spend time there as well. I'm sure. not. With things as they are, I want them sort of in a castle rather than at the manor. Yeah, Aerith totally. Is very on the um, fence about how things are. Uh, not yeah, not just that, but like she would probably demand them to get like you know a little bit better of the worldliness and goods of of the world rather than your little podunk little manor in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that's, that's very true. relative. Keep in mind, you know, this is this is literally four eighty five. We're not we're not talking about a big difference here, but uh, just exposure to different things yeah yeah awesome cool erwin anything for you yeah so erwin uh of course did not meet uh Sigarius. he was uh overseeing some uh manor improvements this summer uh mm. and decided to stay in and so as uh he is uh observing the partial construction of an apiary which yeah i do believe is within Those my bees. grasp <laughs> yeah uh you know their the surveyors were earlier they already got sort of some of the um uh, you know the land uh being formed and shaped and the like construction of the hives and he's uh, got his panoply out his uh, uh you know going over everything looking to see uh you know if anything needs one last uh, bit of adjustment or repair and perhaps this is the first time that um gorthrin that that like so Erwin has let Gorthrin hold a sword, yeah. and he's got a waster, uh, one of those where it's not quite honed to sharpness, but it's still heavy, um, and the like. He pulls it out of a, a rather nice looking scabbard, uh, in fact, uh, a gift that he intends to give to his uh, his uh, sworn brother. But uh, for now, he has uh, Gorthrin just play with it, you know, just uh, you know. You're gonna mind the uh, the end of it. Don't hit the dog. Yeah. <laughs> what do you kind of What do you have there? A sword. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, different right, time. You know, different time. Go find uh, Colwyn and challenge them to a duel sometime. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, and answering all kinds of questions uh, about what it's for and you know, the like, and uh, he gets down on uh, Gorthwin's level that. Uh, tomorrow I sail across the gray seas to Franklin. <laughs> One day all of this will be yours. You will have to decide how you will live and what sort of lord and knight you will be. And whether or not you will answer your liege's call. And I only hope 
<clears throat> that when that time comes, you might look to me and see me as an honorable man that you can follow, as an, for example. I hope to see you when I return. And that'll, yeah, that's kind of it. He'll, you know, just a hug and walk, and then have us walk the manor. Uh, it looks like it's a bad storm. We'll uh, you get those animals in. Hey! He loves it. He loves, it. <laughs> he loves that part. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think Gorthrin, um likes the horses. Nice. That's cool. Oh, well thanks, y'all. So good. Okay, cool. Um, so then we're gonna cut after the storm. Um, we're going to uh, we're seeing a bird's eye view of the pavilions and torches that are. Um, all across the, the the shore here outside of Antone. Um A flotilla of great cogs uh, dock at this port. Um, they are some of the largest ships you've ever seen. They dwarf the barges that you all were raiding on the previous year. Um, their sails are all up and they're all, um, but you can tell just from the sails that they're all green. Um, the, the sea here is massive and blue green. Um, it seems pretty choppy. Uh, but that's not really your concern for the moment. Um, you've been here for a few days, and uh, really the company is more strange to you. Many peasant folk camp where you're at, uh, mercenaries um, from uh, that, that uh, Prince Madoc has hired uh, to, to accompany you in battle here. They're dressed with essentially large blankets and walk around barefoot on the beaches, speaking a language you have not heard before, or maybe you've had in very, very few times. They are Irish. Um, you probably have forgotten the Battle of Carlion maybe 50 years ago under King Constantine, maybe like five kings ago <laughs> at this point. You've all had a rough history uh, since the fall of Rome, let me tell you. Uh, you've been waiting here for three days and nights for the quote-unquote right wind and tide, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, so at this point, I don't know if you've ever been around about a thousand people on a shore uh, for three days. There's straw, trash, weapons, people just kind of scattered around. It's like a Dark Age Coachella over here, okay? Uh, and you two are kind of walking <laughs> around at night, and uh, you will, and this is this is like by torchlight, right? As you are kind of just enjoying each other's company here. Um, unless there was anything you want to do beforehand together, like as you are hanging out, okay? Um, cool. We'll just so let's grouse about military discipline because I do believe that both uh, oh, yeah. Gareth and Irwin have been increasing their battle uh yeah. recently. there's there's a universal truth about all warfare and is that all soldiers gripe okay oh, yeah and that is never Three changed days. and <laughs> we're yeah hip deep in the grousing and you know i think the topic is uh gareth is regaling Irwin about the discipline we saw from sagarius's Sig Sig camp mm. yeah right what, like what, that what that? that roman castra kind of camp that they've set up mm. and gareth is like look I'm not one for digging trenches, but if I am, Peasants work. ask a Roman to do it. I mean, it was, it was a work of art. <laughs> this, this, it yeah. does not make me feel good about our chances on there. I mean, either we shape up when we reach Franklin, <laughs> or I think the entire thing is going to be a disaster. I, I do not wish to dishearten myself before a voyage, but... I cannot uh, find an argument against it. Well, let us hope that our enemy does not uh, see our weakness before we can improve it. Uh, why, why both of you are making having this conversation, this quiet conversation, as you kind of chat by torchlight going by the pavilions, um, you can't help but eavesdrop a little bit and give me an, an awareness test as you go by a one of the more prominent tents. Um, you don't realize it, but then you 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 kind of see look up and we all see the. Um, green um emblem with the dual dragons with the uh gold, gold dragons with a gold line across it's madox camp mm. right uh that's a failure for me it's a fail that's a success Ooh. cool so this is probably the part where colin you're talking you know like we see we hear uh erwin <laughs> talking and uh excuse me we we hear gareth talking and erwin's like wait 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 and you're like, what are you talking? And this is when Erwin hears um, Prince Maynock is talking to his council. And you make, you're able to ascertain a few words after, you know, you get Gareth to be quiet. And you hear, uh, four weeks or one city, no more. Do with that as you please. Hmm. Uh, is so, it possible to 
Game, let me uh, let me give you some context. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> let me give you, let me give you a little bit of a context. This doesn't require an intrigue role here. Um, you were promised Uther. Uther has split up his forces here. Not all of Uther's army is going. Half of his army is sticking back. Um, this is because uh, the door, the the dork of Cornwall, <laughs> yeah, the Duke of Cornwall, uh, Gorlo is uh, a little bit of a shit heel and has never summoned to muster for the, like the last I don't know all the years we've been playing this game. He literally just sits at home. He doesn't do anything. And that's like not a good look for um, Mister. I want to be king of England, and so he's gonna have a he's gonna have a little bit of a talking to with him. Not to mention the constant Saxon threat uh, <laughs> from the from the north and the uh, the west or the east. So he's just a little bit a uh, little little busy, and so half half the forces are sticking around. The Earl um, doesn't have a choice in this in this manner. The Earl's going, and by and basically because the Earl's going, you're going. Um, mm -hmm. He, the Earl does not want to go. This is not what he. This is like the worst use of his time. Sure. Uh, politically. And this is. But this is the Earl saying this, or this is. This is uh, Roderick. This is no, Roderick. no, no, no. Um, this um, is this is just like context for what you do with that information. And you're thinking gotcha. we're we're gonna be who knows how long, yeah, in yeah. the continent, right? And yeah. then you hear Prince Madoc saying, gotcha. four weeks one city or one or, city, four weeks, one city, no more. That's not. That's not a long no. time. No. That's is, not. That's not that's what Uther weak. promised. That yeah. is absolutely not. I, that, I'm that's like what I'm when you say or one city. Like, yeah. yeah. Do you? Yeah. Well, you're yeah, sieging and, a city. Like right. you don't know how long a city is going to be. That could yeah. be a yeah. month. You know. I mean, ask Easily. ask Henry the uh, what Henry sure. the fifth. Uh, how long? Like it True. happens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Okay. That so, Gareth, Gareth is going to take that and be like, "That's it's a raid." That doesn't sit well. Yeah, I think for a couple reasons. One, like we've done the Shaoshi like raiding our neighbor. Yeah. yeah, that's gutter brawling, right? That's what that's what knights do amongst themselves to stay sharp and just give the what ho to your shitty ass neighbor. Yeah, this is these are nations, right? This is these are kings. This is the affairs of state. Yeah. And it seems so nominal, and I think this might be something that makes Gareth feel small. Assuming Erwin passes mm -hmm. on that information to you. Fair. I would at least, you know, like, ask you, do you hear that? And I think, you know, just in casual repetition, four, four weeks, one city. Um, I'm not going to stick around, because I'm not going to get caught... Uh, Oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. but uh, yeah, you know, just sort of like uh, a hurry, uh, hurriedly ushered Gareth off to one of the side uh, avenues. Four weeks. Maybe Four I weeks. heard wrong. Maybe it can't be that long to get across the channel. Uh, yes, maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. Hmm. All right. Well then. <sighs> Hopefully, this will not last another month. We can get out of here before the uh, autumn. Is that what you wish, Erwin? To be in and out of Franklin when there's so many riches and glories to be won? We're defending the memory of Rome itself, are we not? I have no wish to uh, pay a visit. I have a wish to make my mark. And you think your blow will strike so true Ah, Erwin, for once your modesty breaks uh, and the full dam of your pride comes spilling forth. I'm proud of you. Extra time uh, in the spring. So, uh, a bit pugnacious, I think. <laughs> you just, and Erwin is legit uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> pugnacious. Now, there's a word that I'm sure Sagarius Sig knows what it means. <laughs> <laughs> you should meet him. We are, after all, fighting for his is land. Yeah, I would assume <laughs> so. I think I, all we need I, to do is uh, count up the number of knights, subtract the Irish, and we should be able to find him. Excellent. Yeah, because yeah, I would love to meet him. It wouldn't. Be, you wouldn't be British unless you were trying to subtract the Irish. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <Got> <laughs> History. Too real. Okay. Um, yeah. Any, so, so goals. We we acting on this. Uh, right now, Erwin is gonna keep a lid on it. He he's gonna assume 
he's gonna follow sort of like Gareth's, uh, you know, oh yeah, four weeks to cross the channel. No, oh, yeah, clearly not. Um, but it has, he's not, his, his, I don't know, that it's not left him, it's not left his mind. Something's going on. Okay. Erwin will remember that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. We cut to the next day and the horns blow. It is, looks like any other day, honestly. It looks like they'll pass two days, but the horns are blowing, and that means you're setting sail at the next tide, so you're heading out on noon. Uh, yes. You know, you're not sailors. You have no idea why, but apparently no. this is the day. And the, <laughs> the stars have aligned somehow or something, <laughs> right? You're just happy to get off this stanky-ass beach at this point. Uh, so, uh, I want. I just want to spend a quick little moment here. The eight cogs, when they unfurl their sails like their green coated waxed cotton sails with the dual twin yellow dragons of the pen dragon crest on them is one of the most awe-inspiring things you've ever seen like what a great ass king uther must be like to this is this is so much cloth and it's just on the ship died in your name you're like the franks do not have a goddamn snowball's chance in hell seeing this when we come yeah, like that is it's it's literally it, it's you don't get any glory for it, but it definitely makes you feel like you just saw Excalibur, right? Nice. Like it's you know what? Fuck it. You get 50 glory for this part because like this is this is awesome. This is awesome. nice. This is like you just feel dwarfed in the might of someone with this much prestige and glory that could muster this strength. Right. Nice. Right. right? Uh, Cats are it, destroying my house. Oh, no God. worries. Uh, the Earl, Earl uh, rounds you all up to uh, get ready to get on um, one of these boats here, and um, we'll be we'll be moving to the to the to the Franklands, Let's the ocean it. voyage, because you're crossing the British Sea. You're technically in the ocean. It is rough to say the least. Uh, it's no storm, um, but this is way more choppier and way more rock and rolly than any river test you've been on, and there's no sign of land on either side. You know after after a couple hours there you're you're there um one of the salisbury nights or you know you think it's a salisbury night on the ship is like hurling his lunch off the off the side of the the ship here and it's just crying out being like surely a storm is neptune has cursed us these waters are treacherous we can't do this we this is doomed and it's like the sailors are just laughing as this guy's like throwing up just feels absolutely horrible about and just like freaking out and one of, one of the sailors is like sir this this the calmest has been in months the sea ain't flat <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh yeah it turns out ocean voyages at this time is really real sketch <laughs> yeah this is not quite a winter crossing but it's yeah. not the best season for it no um no. it's it's pretty wild uh to yeah. say the least right and he's like you know the you know, like you know you know if you're in a storm believe me and <laughs> anyways <laughs> uh that's but a little bit after that um the horn go out goes out as uh the spotter spot land where you turned yes. around oh. or is this the continent uh it looks it looks kind of the same uh, <laughs> the continent uh, as it comes into view um the it seems to take forever to get there uh but then that's because the cogs are slowing down um as you as you get closer to the shore um you all are ordered not to disembark um, you're supposed to stay here till the morning um and you're like or actually well, technically you're told to just stay and you're not sure why um and that's when you start seeing the um irish mercenaries jump off the boat and wade into the water and go and start raiding and pillaging um, they're basically softening up for you all to uh, disembark. Because you're not just soldiers. You have all the horses. You have all of the technicians. You know, you have all of the logistics on your boats as well. And so um, if this if this is combat and anything's going to happen, you all you all need to get there safe. And so they're they're clearing the landing beach for you. Um, don't worry. It's just a small little couple of thatched huts and things like that. Probably not too much oh, sure. glory. Right? Sure. Um, but you'll have to wait on the boat again for another night, which kind of sucks. Uh mm. I don't know, how are you all feeling about this boat situation right now? It's a weird counterpoint to the glory of our embarkation. Like, we, we get on this ship, this massive sails, it's a gorgeous, like, yes, finally! And then we just, like, we're, like, 50 yards from what we want to be doing. Yep. You're stuck there, watching for the time being. You know? Yeah. You hear, you hear the lamentations of the women, the burning, the pillaging. <laughs> 
and you're there on a boat. Not able to do any of it. I mean, from reading our uh, our Dere Militari, there's a lot of waiting and a lot of nothing. And he, or it's just, I've read a lot about uh, this sort of warfare, but to experience it is another matter. Yep. So perhaps, uh, perhaps our real enemy will make himself known once we have landed. Yeah, I should hope so. <laughs> cool. So uh, it's the morning, and the smoke in the distance is apparently your signal. Uh, where wherever you hear more horns and the, the, the boats one by one begin to get closer to the shore for disembarkation. Um, overall, uh, it goes pretty smoothly. Um, no, relatively few horses run away as you're trying to do this. Uh, <laughs> not, not enough to count against y'all. Um, you don't you don't really you know you're all you're all our soldiers. If you want to know more, I mean, you can ask people and stuff like that. But otherwise, you're just again you're just waiting. It's just actually. <laughs> Not, Quick not very fun war. Uh, are our squires with us? Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah, their Just squires okay. would be. Um, so like Manoc, crib, this is, this yeah. is a thing. Okay. Uh, Madoc would have ordered that you bring your squires because of the future conflicts across Logris. They're going to need more veterans. They need people skilled in war. So your, your squires sense. are coming with them. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, so uh, that's when... As you're as you're waiting around, um, the first things that come up in business is like this is the first time you're actually like seeing like what an invasion force is. You know, this isn't like a this isn't Mercury Creek, this isn't you all lining up and doing a battle. Um, this is like you're building a city here um, mm -hmm. of tents uh, where you you have ha like some some of the best craftsmen are here uh you know going out in parties with uh, other knights escorting them getting as much lumber and things they can they can disassembling houses for for wood supplies and they're beginning to construct great engines of war um you know catapults uh mangonels uh for for sieges hmm. um this is this is the real deal uh, so uh i think i think on this this case here um, for to, to expedite things, you would be on one of these foraging missions. Um, I don't I don't think there's anything like you have to worry about. Most of them have been driven off here, but you got to just do it, mm -hmm, sure. right? Uh, and uh, yeah, you basically just to go get to walk through the remains of a fishing village, uh, basically as as you go head off and letting these people look around for any sort of like metal tools, things that can melt down, uh, reuse. Uh, pretty pretty uh, thankless thankless work here uh, specifically it's thankless because some of the prisoners are still around um, not not soldiers but just sort of like the peasantry of, of the Franks and honestly they speak a different language but you can't tell the difference between them and Saxons mm -hmm. uh, they same uh, you've seen the same sort of religious iconography uh, similar accents you think but you know they're they just kind of seem the same uh, do we know where we landed? Uh, yes. I'm um, sorry. Uh, you landed up the Cezanne River, and I'm about to tell you that um, your orders are that once the army has been assembled, you're going to be taking the town of Bayou. Nice. Okay. Let's do it. But um, yeah. So but now before just, you know. right. Uh, but before we do that, um, I want to know what this is like because you all haven't had any chance for any glory yet. And these these prisoners or these like escorted kind of captives are kind of like, you know, they're spitting at you. They would go so far as to spit at you, um, for for your your comeuppance. Is this like a, uh, you know, you're you're within your rights to do whatever you want to these people? How do you treat your prisoners? They're go ahead, being go hostile. Ahead and go first, Jim. They're being hostile yeah. as long as they're not like drawing a weapon and trying to kill you, right? But they're sure, just, like. Sure. They're cursing at you, spinning at you, um, you know. I, I in, mean, in like their, secretly, in their I I love their their fight. The fact that they haven't cowed is yeah. uh, is it going to impress upon or, or But um, <clears throat> a show of weakness at this point would be very unwise. And uh, while he will, he's not about to execute someone. He will have whoever's spitting at us uh, yeah. punished, uh, flogged, or whatever the. Uh, punish whatever the standard camp punishment for this kind of thing is he'll 
he'll have he'll try to follow whatever book we're following. In support, yeah, okay, um, yeah. So you would, okay. Um, would you would you order this yourself, or is it like to, or would you have some of like the, you know, um, soldiers assisting you here? Because you're on your horse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, doing mm -hmm. this around. Um, would you have like one of like your your foot soldiers, or like you're even like your squire or somebody go like grab this guy and bring him back kind of situation? I think I'd have him grab him, but yeah. if it looked like it, if it was directed at Irwin, he would. Yeah. He would probably, um, I think he's going to administer uh, the punishment himself. Okay. Yeah. Unless that, unless doing that would be like a super huge faux pas or something. No. You know? Oh yeah. No, no. I'm not telling you to do a faux pas. Yeah. Again, you have, you have total access here. This is, this sure, is a sure. war zone. Yeah. Uh, you can do whatever it's you want. It's within my rights to. Oh yeah. Do no, they're all. a, they're a peasant. Uh, sure. So you could have done that anyways, but B they're, they're a hostile peasant and in yeah, another yeah. land where you're raiding, you can do whatever. Yeah. They're fair. Like, if you yeah. wanted to kill them, say they were resisting, you know, that's totally fine. You know, you just kill yeah. them just for the sake of killing them. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but that's no, insane. but administering administering justice for the stuff like that means I think you should take a check to your just. Okay. Um, for, for um, in the heat of the moment here. Uh, no, I think you should test it. I'm sorry. You should test it first. Because I actually okay. want to see if you can, right? This person's in your grill. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, this person's pissed, like, has done everything they can to piss you off here. Yeah. Um, so I want to know if, if this is a, hold on, is this temperance or is this reckless or is this, Ooh. like you should test uh, reckless before I don't think you test just, I could right? see reckless. Yeah. I yeah. am vengeful or forgiving, right? Like whether it's, well, I will forgive you because of your, your natural fighting spirit, or I'm going to like vengefully, like you, you spurned me. I'm going to not, I'm, I'm going back with my first cut here. I think we're going to do just. Because uh, the question here is like, I thought the question was, do you do you overreact when when this happens to you? Which is why that would be. But no, I think it I think you sound like you, there's a way for me to overreact. No, it sounds like you're acting yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's why I walked it back. I think I think yeah. it's just a just. Just right. it does. It sounds like you're trying to deal. Yeah, he is trying to do that. Ooh, not quite though. No. Okay. Cool. No. Um. Right. Well. Uh. I think I think the obvious answer here is, uh, who's your squire? Frayed. Oh, Frayed is. Frayed. Isn't Frayd uh, Elad's boy? Is that right? I believe Hold so. On. He's he's not. He's someone I was Fraid. given to uh, teach humility. Humility to. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So here's here's some humility. Here's your lesson for your failed just roll. You do yeah. that. You pull him aside here, but Frayd runs him through with a sword. Mm. Like you mm. know, like you bring him over there, and he just kills him. He just stabs him yeah. before you. Like you're like getting your 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 stuff ready for him. He just he just kills him. Yeah. Yeah. And he wipes the blood off on his clothes, on on the peasant's clothes. All right, I think that. Uh, ooh. What lesson do you impart? I am taking. We're gonna. I'm gonna dress down, uh, Fred, right here. I don't think I'm gonna strike him, uh, because that that would be just. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I am going to. Uh, this is in front of. This is in front of Everybody, Gareth. Right. It's in front of other soldiers too. But like, it's just yeah. you two knights per se, and then a bunch of right, and a bunch of them. Um, yeah. If he's does he? What's his reaction? Is I like, like I'm gonna come at him uh, if I can. If it seems like he's, he's sort surprised, of surprised. I'm gonna disarm him. Uh, yeah, you grab the sword he, out of his hands. He too. Uh, he's not expecting it. You know, he thought he did, like he just did what you thought he wanted to do, right? Yeah. The next time I want someone killed, I will tell you specifically. Until then. We are to treat these people as uh, our law demands. Otherwise, we are no better than the barbarians we have come here to fight. <laughs> people. <laughs> it's like it's technically Irwin, with, with all due respect, <laughs> these you call these people? I haven't seen yeah. a I haven't seen a person other than the ones we came on this boat here. These people are you know these 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 things are these are these are beasts. Then kill them, all of them. Hey, he'll just point to him with like, bare hands. If they're just beasts, then you won't have any problem. I think that's that's where you get him. And he's like, you know, because that's now now he's caught in the thing. Like he's trying to be the tough and cool guy. Mm -hmm. And now you're giving him a challenge and he obviously doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Right? Choke them all. Put their face in the mud. Watch them struggle. That's what it, that's where he'll leave it then. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll hang on to his sword. Yeah. Is that? Hmm. 
Gareth, mm. Gareth like oh. rides by. Yeah, no, he, who, he bites his tongue. He bites his tongue. He wants to say something to you, but he bites his tongue. Yeah. I, he's like, he looks like he's about to say something. Gareth is going to pointedly ride by, like, okay, let's keep moving. <laughs> uh, and as he's passing Freyd, he just says, One doesn't talk back with Erwin. And I would think his squire knew that already. Uh, and then he's gonna like pause and look down at the corpse go it was a clean thrust though and like spurs forward yeah don't do courage damn yeah. <laughs> right um, big, I'll give it yeah. back to him at the end of the day <laughs> yeah that's fair. yeah right yeah. and you, you, all, you all just proceed to make camp and set for the day uh, before yeah. you begin to um, you know uh, eventually break and, and begin marching to Bayou to lay siege nice that's good that's real good. Mm. That's some good teaching. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. Uh, welcome, welcome to Raid Town. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, then, then we're gonna cut to the um, actual proper Bayou uh, part. So uh, Prince Madoc is in charge here. Um, Siagoras is trying to. Um, kind of exert a little more control and Prince Maynard's like no you know this is mine uh, he is he's a very self uh, Prince Maynard is a pretty selfish ruler and loves when he is the attention and doing everything like that and it needs to be and it's very obvious it doesn't again no intrigue role required here or anything like that but like Maynard needs to be is the center of attention and rightly so he's the son of Uther right and uh, you know he doesn't he doesn't take any he's not used to people trying to treat him like an equal yeah. Right, and Praetor is he does his best to try to like be like an an advisory person to to Madoc here uh, but you know clearly clearly, uh, Syagoras wants to um, kind of be let go and kind of like take charge here as he's this is the beginning of his reclamation and Madoc is definitely holding him back hmm. um, there's probably a, like a, a few tense moments and there's probably like a couple you know a heated exchange of words that really nail it but um in any case uh Madoc, Madoc is running this battle here okay uh so uh great battle uh one second change the music oh no did i forget to name my new horse i think i did <laughs> oh you didn't name your horse my new one because and died, remember? Oh yeah, Sweet. I forgot. Yeah, and I had well, to you buy a new one. Well, you lost your you didn't lose your destrier, did you? Or you don't have a destrier. charger, yeah. You lost your charger. Oh no, I lost my I lost oh, my, my rounds. So that's yeah. that's right. Yeah. Or tribune. Okay, so I didn't buy a new horse then. I didn't want to do that. I didn't think I didn't think you did. Cool. All right. Um, so we're not going to do the full book of battle thing today for the siege, despite me kind of wanting to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side of caution here and not spend the last hour of us just doing this battle, even though I do I want it so bad. There are going to be more battles there. There are, there are always, there's always another battle. Okay. Um, so I think what first we're going to do is can I have one of you ro uh, roll for Prince Maynox battle score for me. Uh, it's 19. I'm going to roll for the Franks. Got a column. Yeah, I got it. Okay, got a 12. Six. Okay. Um, ooh, okay, so it's going to be a little bit more rough than I thought. Not not a problem. Uh, where are my... Cool. Uh... Jim, can you roll 2d20 for me, please? Yes. Let's see. <clears throat> These will be the soldiers you're up against. Okay, cool. Um, that would be uh, general warriors and axe and spearmen. Happy days. 
rich. Like, nothing. And been traumatized <laughs> by Axemen <laughs> ever since that first. <laughs> no, thank oh. you. No at great axes ever again. Yes. It's okay, though. These these aren't proper Saxons where they have ridiculously high damage. These are Franks. They, right. they are not as strong or potent. Oh. Saragon, thank you very much. You are gifting yeah. all of the subs. That's very, very kind of you. Crazy cool. Okay. Um, so... Uh, let's get ready to rumble here. Uh, what this battle begins to look like, right? So, um, Bayou, as far as a city goes, uh, it looks like it could have been any city in England. Um, you know, it's not stone. It's it's very, like, earth mound, sticks, uh, palisades, the whole, the whole nine yards there. Um, however, uh, unlike most cities in England, it's currently on fire. All right. Right, as as uh, you begin as sort of the some of the we've seen some of the siege equipment sort of like fire, sort of like these sort of flaming shots and and um, just general just breaking down at this at this place. Uh, so there's so much smoke um, that's filling the air, uh, sort of like the the shouts of men. But um, at this point, there's finally the uh, a, a solid shot from a mangonel sort of like hits near the gatehouse. And it begins to kind of crumble as the, as an opening reveals itself, and that is the time the horns go, and that's the time we're charging into the town of Bayo. Nice. Okay, so um, I you know I really want to say roll initiative, but it's not a thing <laughs> in this game, you know. And so instead, uh, we're gonna do this. Um, and both roll of battle. you, can both of you, give me a battle roll. Yeah. Um, this is gonna determine your opponent. If you succeed at this battle test, you get to choose your opponent. Sweet. Son of a... <laughs> Otherwise, I, I even... choose. All right. Okay. Um, do you... Okay. So uh, we have one success here. So Erwin. Mm -hmm. Erwin, you're going to have your, your choice here on your horse. Um, would you like to fight uh, both an axe and spearman, or would you like to fight a warrior? I think I would prefer to charge into someone that can't strike me as I strike them the warriors yeah you know that that makes a lot of sense to me okay uh, who am i charging eric <laughs> two people you're charging into an accent of spearman color oh fun no it's okay you'll be fine yeah um all right uh so we're as we get ready to charge here um you will you are on horseback here so you do get your plus five for being mounted um, do you want to invoke any passions? Hmm. Uh, let me look. I always almost instinctively say honor because uh, I'm power gaming, but um, I'm actually going to invoke loyalty because Prince Matic himself has like brought us here, has brought er the Earl of Roderick here. And like we... I really want to like be that good bannerman. And just show that like Earl Roderick doesn't show up nominally. He brings the thunder, and I'm the thunder. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty ambiguous how he's ex you know received your sort of like how you handle the blood feud situation. So yeah. this this might be a pretty good decisive way of, of yeah. Awesome. Oh no. No. <laughs> Okay, you're melancholy. Right. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I... Minus five. Yeah. Do... And after this, you're going to get depressed unless someone snaps you out of it. I think this is... This is... Um, like what Erwin had said, four weeks or, or a city. He's like, wait, is that really all this is? Is this transactional? Is that all this is? Is that... Earl Roderick has called his bannermen in service of this Frank Frankish lord. Yeah. And it's just like a just a handshake. And he's, he's like it's like running through his head as he's like charging. He's like, is this, is this really all I am? Am There's, I no better than these Irish kerns that we've been brought here with? Right. Uh the there's just uh you know, arrows firing overhead, 
Uh, the kerns themselves have ladders and stuff and have been breaching the sides of the, the, the forts as you're just kind of charging the gate here. And, uh, damn. Okay, uh, Colin, let's do, let's do your battle first here. Yeah. All right. You're the first to speak with the passion, so let's go ahead and do that. So you're taking a minus five because you are uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, disheartened. Yeah. But you're getting a plus five because you're on a horse and these people aren't. Um, however, you are going to have to split your your attacks. They're um, they're all they're wearing is uh, queer bully. So they're just got yeah, that, that sweet sweet boiled leather. I'm gonna stack all fifteen on the um... great spear. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, yeah. if I can take out honestly, the spear, that gives me the the advantage of the horse. So I. It's not a bad, not a bad strat there, my friend. Yeah. Um, so so plus you would five minus five. Well, you're. Uh, there's no, a couple. There, you get plus five because you're on a horse, minus five because you are. Um, melancholic. Melancholic. You're getting um, plus five because you're getting charged. Oh, sorry, you're the the one doing the charging. Okay, so plus on five, the first so. on the first round, yeah. Uh, great spear negates my mounted. Folks. However, yes, great spear does negate so, your mounted, so you're actually so still at zero, I think, right? Yeah. Why did it not go through? Try again. There we go. Success. Well, they just gonna chuck everything they have at you. They fail. Ooh. Uh, but there's an axeman too. Yeah. Uh, the axe. Okay. That's not. That's terrible damage. Oh my gosh! Wow, that's not that's great. Awful. Um, they're still gonna be up for sure. Um, so they just took nineteen points. In, so let's. So you're gonna hit. You're gonna. A, you're getting hit by the axe. But before we do the axe thing, let's resolve this this spear attack, right? Mm -hmm. So you just attacked a Saxon, and if my records are right, Saxons have way more hit points than that. Yeah. Easily. I think, I think you gave him eleven. The problem here is like I think that's the threshold if for um if they need to see if they stand up or not. It's like super close. Uh, archer, foot soldier, there you are. Well they have a little bit weaker damage and stuff anyway. Uh their dex is ten, so yes, they are. They're not they gotta make a dexterity chest. Okay. They pass though. Okay. They stand. Uh, however, uh, they just took a but ton of damage. Took eleven damage. Uh, because I rolled, what's odd number? My thing breaks. Yeah, your lance breaks on a, on odd. Yes. Okay. No, so it's, it's break, is... I, no, 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 no. It breaks on evens. Fuck. I'm almost I'm almost confident it breaks on evens. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame this on Barrel. That's what I'm gonna do. Do he, it. He hasn't been keeping my lance in good order. That's de it's definitely not my shitty rolling. It's all barrels fall. Uh, cool. Uh, axe strike coming at you. Fourteen. The, uh, that's not bad. I only take two through my armor. That's not too bad. Uh, because yeah, I get my shield. Oh yeah, you got your shield. Nice. Yeah. Um, no, your shield only does three axes. Okay, so I take three damage, not two. Your, your shield, instead of blocking six, blocks three this turn. Okay. That's the benefit of using an axe. I'm, I need to write this down. How much does our chainmail block? 12 or 10? Uh, 10? Chainmail's 10. Was, chainmail's 10, and my shield would normally do six. Yes. But this time it only does three, so I only take one damage. Yes, you take one damage. Okay. Good. I'm actually writing it down right now, so I don't have to ask ever again. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, let's cut this first round over to Erwin. All right. So I am not calling on any of my passions because Erwin sort of he's read his read his stuff and knows that uh, perhaps this is, there's more to come. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll take the plus five for mounted. And is there anything else? The charge. Uh, charge plus five. Right. Warrior's got uh, an axe. Two-handed axe. Let's do this. There's the lance. Um, they get minus five against you. 
They miss. Missed. Uh, yes. And Lance uses my horses. Mm -hmm. uh, sweet. 686 then. <clears throat> How about uh, Freight? How's he? Uh... Ooh, 22 is good. Nice. Um, 22 is going to be, uh, yikes. They, they, they take minus 8, so that's 16, uh, 14, uh, which is way over their decks. So D20. They fail. Uh, yeah, you knocked him down. Mm. That's not good. That's not good for them. No. Um, <laughs> they so get trampled? <laughs> uh, I mean... Make a horsemanship. Do you want to? You want to just ride them through, oh, basically? Gosh, let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just get ourselves. Let's just get carried away. Yeah. Yeah, they do. There we go. There we go. Uh, they're gonna take another D6 points of damage. Tap dance on that Saxon. <laughs> another five. <laughs> Damn. Um, their unconscious score is eight. They're gone. You got him. <laughs> that's, you got him with that. Uh, yeah. No, that's 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 literally the, dif the difference. Uh, yeah. So they just get thrown aside. Wilhelm scream into the into the pit, uh, into the into the. <laughs> awesome. Back into the ditch. All right, Colin. Back to you. You're fighting too. Yeah. Uh, the good news is I switch over to my sword, which is better than my lance. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the spearman. Um, well, hold on. Keep in mind. So you have your lance out right now. It's more or less a it's spear. Shattered. No, again, I thought it breaks. It breaks on an even, not an odd. Right, I rolled an even. No, you rolled nineteen points of damage. Oh, it's on the damage roll, not the attack roll. Got it. Yeah, the damage is it's even. So that's why I think you saw your spear. Keep this in yeah. mind. If you're going to draw your weapon and attack, you take a minus five because it's a combo action. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, because I'm not charging, I use my spear skill, not my lance skill. My spear skill is six. So. Okay, so maybe maybe the sword is actually the better thing. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be minus five. That's a success. Uh, you didn't tell me how you're divvying this up, by the way. Uh, I was still doing everything on the on the spear guy. Okay. I figure. I mean, we have the advantage of armor, and I'm gonna try and use that. I'll take some lumps, but if I can take out one of them, then GG no re. Spear fails. Yeah. Uh, Axeman right. succeeds though. Okay. All right. 12 damage. Wow. Okay. That's extremely average. Uh, so they're going to they're take four more points of damage. Uh, that's not much. Taking four on top of how much damage. You did 19 to them before, right? Yeah. So that's 11, that's 15, um, half 15. Okay, they're still up. Uh, if you do eight more points of damage, then they'll go down. All right. Uh, did, you wanna, did you want to try to get your horse in this or uh, body block? Or? Yeah, actually want to like wheel the horse's butt around, try and like get in the way of this axe guy. If I can like yeah. get the horse to keep wheeling and keep them from coordinating, that'd be ideal. Yeah, do that. Horsemanship. Mm -hmm. uh, not a bad horseman. Oh, that should. That's a minus five. Uh, I failed anyway. Oh, okay. That's not great. Uh, yikes. Okay. Um, boy. I was not expecting you to fail there. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about failure here. Um, so you're trying to maneuver your horse to, to like really like aggressively push these people, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think the answer here is that um, try to like shove them over and kind of like bully them. They're going to try to grab you. So I think the answer here now is you're going to need to make another horsemanship or fall prone as they're like trying to pull you off your horse. Oh, uh, fuck. Okay. This time I'll remember the minus five for being melancholic, but I succeed. Oh, look at that. No problems there. You, you, I don't know what you do. What, what does success look like here? Like, do you rear your horse? Do you like kick them off? Of um, you? Yeah. Sword? Like, I think I think that they're, they're like grabbing at the leg, and I think I just kick one leg out of the stirrup to yeah. knee him in the face, and like just, you know, uh, it doesn't do any damage, but it, it gets them to back off and stop pawing at me. Oh yeah, cool. And uh, then you take an axe to the side. <laughs> That's actually probably what. Yeah, I like kick him back, and he Pretend. just comes right. 
I don't take any damage. Uh, yeah, that's you don't even need to roll your shield. Yeah. Awesome. That's tense as hell. Uh, Irwin, <laughs> this is happening. Do you do you want to get involved here and help him out? Uh, I mean, are, are we in the same uh, lance or, yeah. or adjacent yeah. or anything? It'd be adjacent. You, you can uh, get yeah, over there. Certainly. You see him fighting. Yeah, certainly. If there's a, uh, yeah, we can make a difference. Uh, make an uh, awareness test, maybe. See if there's a way to get to them. That wouldn't yeah, yeah. be costly. Oh, yeah. I don't want to expose myself to too much. Uh, yeah. Here. Mm. Okay. Uh, there mm -hmm. is, uh, mm -hmm. but um, you have to pay the price for it. So you do this, but um, you just have to dodge a javelin attack. Right. Okay, that's just okay. That's fine. Right. As you're I'll, like, I'll take a javelin. You know, um, from from like one of the battlements. Sure. So the slings and arrows, and whatnot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. oh, suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep. Oh, well, we're gonna hits. enjoy enjoy this sling and arrow. Watching. Uh, we're like just do massive damage. Sixteen. Yeah, that's right. Not not great. You're gonna take six. Uh, if I've got my shield and my armor, go. What, what is, what oh no, that's that sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Yeah, so, no, wow, you don't actually take any damage. Jeez. Uh, uh, <laughs> one of those yeah. heavy uh, Roman uh, pillar. Yeah. Um, um, the way I'm doing this right now, because I'm not sure, but Colin, when you take the damage, uh, if your armor ablates the damage. Do you still have to roll to see if you stay on your horse if you take if your armor ablates the damage or is that I was just spillover damage means you get knocked over right? Um, it not, is not damage. Natural damage. Uh, it doesn't matter if it goes through that you have still been hit. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Horsemanship. That, yeah. Okay. That's um. Horse, yeah, yeah. Horsemanship then. All right. Here we go. Thanks, Colin. Come on, guys. Thank you. You're good. Right. Good. Right. Yeah. So you, you take your so you like it's that part where you like kind of get hit and you kind of like yeah your mm -hmm. foot gets out of the stirrup and you're. Yeah. You uh, save yourself there as you as you uh, you know buck on over to to help. All right. Uh, can I get the charge bonus for that? Oh or... yeah, you can. Oh yes. All right. Don't suffer those <laughs> slings and arrows oh, for no. nothing. Nothing. Who are you? Wait, 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 oh, who are you attacking? I would have been attacking the probably the axeman because it seemed like that was the one who was okay. uh, on so his back. But that is are a you, miss. Um. Well, is your oh, lance? Wait, oh, wait. No, it's not. That's not. You forgot to no. modify. I did. Uh, you forgot to modify the plus five for charging and plus yep. five for, for um, a horseman. Yes. For a horseman. So that would have been 24. Yeah. Uh, Which is, that is, that is a success. Uh, in All fact, right. that's a crit because that you would, uh, if you're rolling a 24, um, you're getting a plus four to your roll, which is 17 plus four is 21. Um, so that's actually a critical. Sweet. Okay. So you just critical the Axeman. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. So that's uh, what? Double dice? Uh, yep. Yeah. Double dice. Double dice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cas <laughs> casual 47. Uh, describe how this person turns nope. the paste. <laughs> so, like, no, uh, what it, you, <laughs> right. he's like, he just Instant got that dead. hit on, uh, on Colt or on uh, Gareth. No, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. And he'll, uh, he's not going to carry on through. He's going to stick by, stay formation. Yeah. True. Okay. Man. Uh, Sweet. Nice. You're. Your your battle brother is by your side, and uh, you know you get hit by the axe, and then a moment later, just a spear goes right through them as as Irwin's right by your side. Boom! To the shield. Let's go. Is there anything anything you want to say, Garrett? Uh, yeah. So this is Colin speaking. Yeah. I think this is an interesting moment. Uh, where Gareth can either, because I still have love Irwin as a passion. Right? Yeah. And it's been slipping. Yes. It's been slipping now. No, that's I'm wondering. And I'm wondering if this is a, oh my God, that's why I love this guy. Or fuck this guy, like coming in here, <laughs> stealing my thunder, like I need to be saved. Like he's got it. Why would he ride over here? Yeah. I, I honestly don't know which it is for Gareth. So I'm wondering what I should roll to consult the bones. How generous? Because you're. Is you're testing like, or suspicious? Suspicious. Sus mm. You're testing. You're testing your suspicious because that's like your cynicism of people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? I think. I think it's that. Or. Or is it actually testing your trusting? I. I you, think I'm, you want to believe him, so you should probably be test your trusting. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. 
Not uh, does my minus five apply to this as well, or is it just skill attacks? No, it does. Okay. It does. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm don't, minus don't five everything. Oh, oh, so close. close. No, you're Oof. angry about it. Mm. I. No, this know, is good. And you know what this is? So we're this whole stay, time we're we're staying in the scene. Go. Yeah, uh, Gareth is just like listlessly fighting these Saxons because right yeah. now he feels like a Fuck fucking yeah. mercenary. Yeah. Right. He feels small. He feels like he is being You're... used unwisely. And Achilles Gareth... is being misspent here. <laughs> yeah. And fucking Odysseus comes in here, like yeah. blows through my opponent. And I'm just like, you fucking idiot. You don't even know you're Try being hard. used. You sheeple. Yes. I'm like, I think he's Try really. Hard, Irwin. <laughs> yeah. He's like, God damn like. I've thought this guy is full of hidden depths. He's so yeah. modest and soft-spoken and acts with such surety. But you know who also does that? It's not just deep and wise people. It's idiots. Idiots who don't open their mouth are often indistinguishable from wise people. <laughs> and Gareth is just my next ranting in his own head about, he's like, this fucking Irwin guy. <laughs> this, no, 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 no. We're, we're staying here. We're staying in this mm. moment. So, because I think I think as this battle's going around, we can do another combat and stuff. But I really think we should stay here because I think this is the time when like you have a moment to talk, and mm. Irwin, like, yeah, like what, like you're wearing you're wearing your helmet, so maybe it's not easy to see what he's like right now. But like you know, like what do you say? You, you're not you're you know us as players are privy to this, but Irwin's mm. not privy to Gareth's thoughts right now. No, what do you no. say to him? He'd probably just shout through the din of battle, just, uh, the gap is close. We should uh, press on. Yeah, you know, just a general kind of yeah, like. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Gareth is like, have we been paid? He's like, not yet. Not yet. No, our wages have yet to be calculated in this venture. Uh, wages are through the gap what is wrong with you this, yes he's like wheeling horses yeah <laughs> no, no this is this is important this is an important mechanical thing here you notice that he is melancholic <clears throat> and you have the okay. option mechanically to do what's called snapping out of it and you can get him to get out of this melancholia yeah i think okay. gareth has pulled his helmet off and yeah like hurled yeah. it on the ground and you see at, he no, is at just, him at him yeah i just <laughs> yeeted at you i'm like <laughs> you fool <laughs> why pour yourself into this mis guided travesty you know, you're not some irishman are you addled the ocean has got you addled this is still a fight regardless of who or why or what our liege brought us this That's, is our purpose. that is your foolishness speaking Owen. or not all fights are the same do you, you think might, oh any God. pig is like the one we hunted before our vigil that raid nearly cost us our life and it was half this and yet I felt twice the man during that fucking raid. Can I do anything about how you feel on the inside? Only that you must fight. Snap out of it. Get your head. Lead your lance. And charge through that gap. Uh, you can and obviously watch Gareth, me as I do it. Yet Gareth like trots right, so like they're they're like facing opposite directions, but close. He goes. He goes <laughs> Yeah. I am not your squire. I shall not cringe when you chastise me, Erwin. Oh, you are so... Uh, oh, very God. well, then. Find yeah. yourself. Yeah, he's... he's yeah, Erwin's yeah, yeah. No, almost no, no. like, this, we're, you're this is a him. legit no, no. fight. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 that's that's probably what's going to happen here. They so like mangonels. <laughs> so, so here's what's happening, right? Um, so you want to... if It sounds like you're trying to implore him to, like, you know, your loyalty and think of the good things here. So this is what happens, right? When you try to snap somebody out of it, it's an opposed mm. resolution between a victim's passions here. So it's mm. going to be your passion versus his passion as you're like pleading with him, right? Which we just yeah. heard, right? Yeah. Uh, so this okay. is so good. Um, okay. So, right. uh, am I still rolling modified passion or? Um, the attempt, an attempt at an opposed resolution between the victim's passions abroad in the state and the healer's passion to trade. If the healer wins, the condition is ended. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so I'm still ro I'm rolling regular. So you're rolling loyalty versus loyalty, like as a test mm -hmm. here. Got it. Do you want mm -hmm. to use any passions right now, Jim, to boost up your ability to call on a passion here? Mm -hmm. well, now I'm gun shy after a while. It does sound like you're using loyalty, right? It sounds yeah, like you're, you yeah. you're going to use your loyalty to uh, Roderick. To, yeah, to, to Roderick. Out. 
I'm out yeah, of it. Yeah, it's like, come on, at the very least, you don't have to like me or yeah. like Erwin, but you, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he will. All right. Okay. I'll Here we that. go. All right. Calls on his loyalty. I failed. You got him. You did it. You did it. Oh, my God. The victim Oof. snaps out of it. The healer yeah. wins. The condition is ended and the victim snaps out of it. I think Erwin is like I just said, right? I'm not your squire. I will not cringe when you chastise me. And Orange just like, come on, Fraid. Like, and your actual squire is following you into battle. Yeah. And Gareth just has this moment of like, fuck. Like, not going to pick up his helmet. No. That helmet stays where it is. And Gareth is going to follow Erwin back into the the thick no. of things <laughs> I think, without a helmet no no wait 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 wait, wait, wait. yes because you, your squire your squire finally catches up to you and it's like you sir so, so, and you're just like knock it out of his hand again <laughs> like fuck you Not Barry. Now. get me another lance <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, um, this game okay this game oh, oh my god ass. look at that erwin pulling gareth oh. out of this the throne is fucking tantrum. That is so good. <laughs> then like, die here in the ditch outside Bayou. <laughs> yeah, like this is this is this is why I wanted to play Pendragon. Oh yeah, this, this moment is exactly why I wanted to play Pendragon. This shit is the best. That's so that's awesome. good. That's that's good game juice right there. Good. You yeah. didn't get you didn't go mad uh, and attack him, which could have been a ben uh, happens yep. if you failed Sweet. that. Oh, good. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, cool. I think. I think. I just. Won't, I don't want to continue the battle after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, emotional that's, that's high point. Yeah. Let's that was just it. That, scene that, was, that was the scene. That was the fucking scene right there. Right. Yeah. Um, it was so cut to the aftermath. Right. And here's the aftermath. Uh, so you all. You all are counting your plunder. Um, each of you roll two d six plus one. Uh, that's your Libra booty. Ooh, that is. That is a nice chunk of, and of course I rolled low average. average. <laughs> a little below average, actually. Yeah. That's that's pretty bad, actually. Okay, let's go seven. <laughs> okay, you Oof, four. Oh, wow. Uh, four. Your modesty. I mean, you yeah. wouldn't be modest. With... <laughs> yeah. like, we, sh we shouldn't have spent time arguing. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, how much glory for the actual battle? Oh, um. so you're going to get... Let's say a hundred plus uh, the Saxon glory of your the three people. So, um, well, I guess you get one person. We didn't yeah. finish the spearman. That's fine. That's fine. He's dead. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the so you get glory for the spearman. So that's twenty. Um, and I guess Erwin, Erwin, you're gonna get the axeman and the spear and uh, the, both axemen that you kill. So that's gonna be forty. So you get hundred. One twenty for me. One forty for Erwin. Erwin. Dope. It's cool. So uh, we cut back to like the shore where like the beginning or kind of like the, the middle camp area away from Bayo um, as sort of like the king's loot is getting hauled out right by like all the carts and everything that you can get from um, the, the sacking of Bayou. Uh, you know, you're you, as usual, you're back on shitty as guard duty. Um, but this is a, you know, just by, by circumstances uh, that you're just where you're at at this time, maybe you're around the Earl. Um, Praetor Syagrius and his retinue of uh, Equites uh, show up, um, you know, congratulating everybody for their, their great success and for future battles here. And Madax says, not so fast. And, um, you know, Prince uh, Praetor Syagrius is like, uh, he actually gets off his horse and like takes off his helmet. I'm so, um, Madoc, right? Madoc has not left his horse, right? And he's like, but you know, battle awaits. We have driven them by, from Bayou. You know, they're 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 on the run. Uh, and Prince says, "I did not stutter, Siagrius. We will not be pursuing any further." And Siagrius is just dumbfounded at this at this turn, this heel turn of of Madoc. And he goes, "But." You, your your father swore, Prince, uh, and Prince Madoc cuts him off. He's like, I am not my father. And Praetor stiffens up. Roman salutes him. Says, fine. And victory to the honorable. 
Men, mount your horses. We ride. Leave this poison behind us. And uh, yeah. Earl, Earl's like, you don't, you don't go after him. <laughs> if it <Yeah>. wasn't obvious. <laughs> you don't, you know. Siagras is, is a cool like, guy. <laughs> Gareth is like, I just got into this fight. I, I just got into the spirit of the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, and now and you're getting sucked away. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe even uh, Erwin gives him sort of a sheepish, not not quite apologetic look, but just a, uh, this place. What is the Earl's reaction to this? Like, he's there, right? Uh, he's actually, like, literally prays for a minute. Like, he's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> he doesn't want to be here another minute. He loves raiding. Don't get him wrong. He loves this, like, the battle and just loves that shit. But, um... No, he has so much shit to do around Serum right now that, like, this is just a huge weight, like, a waste of time, and his head's there, right? So he's like, oh, you answered my prayers. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'll finally get back and plotting against my rival, uh, who knows what the fuck he's doing right now, because he didn't come with him. You know, he's with Uther mm. uh, and, and the Duke of the Vale and everybody. Well, he's, you know, I get sent off. That's This is how you come back and your lands are gone. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, yeah. Welcome. This is this is nobility. You get sent sure. off, and someone they you get presumed dead. Someone comes up, takes your shit, marries your Ramana wife. I'm yeah, yeah. That's like this Cornwall is a, this never what makes muster. Yeah, <laughs> Cornwall's playing the real game. Just yeah. kidding. He's just AFK. He's just a player. He's been. He just right. hasn't joined the game yet. <laughs> he has really bad ping, so he just sits <laughs> in the back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Still on so the the Franks just so like rode home. immediately out, right? I mean, not the Franks, the the Romans. Uh, Romans, yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Shit. I, like, Gareth would have gone. Gareth would have wanted to like say something. This is, but this is he feels gagged right now. Just like, oh yeah, I, no. No. Yeah, this is this is a blunt reminder of his place in things, and he is still so far down on the totem pole compared to where he wants to be. Yeah. No. You think about what it would be like to, you know, be a traitorous deserter to your liege, or fighting for a noble cause. Sure. I think. But then I you think, think the better of it. Yeah, I think on the ride back, Gareth to, is just musing out loud to Erwin, you know, like. All these times have spurred my horse where I wished it to go. I think for the first time, I feel what it's like to have spurs dig into my own side. Indeed. This is uh, quite the lesson in the way of the world. This feels hollow somehow. Feels hollow. No one wants to be the horse. No but one wants to that's why we work, is it not? Well, the horse Our children animal. shall ride. They yes. shall not be horses. <sighs> we hope. Hopefully they do not have to cross the sea just to uh, appease their liege. They can grow uh, fat and happy in their manners. <laughs> if my children are fat, then <laughs> I haven't beaten them enough. <laughs> Uh, cut back to y'all. Y'all uh, conclude and go to fall um, events as you all make it back. Uh, sea is just as fair coming back, um, slow going. Um, uh, Uther, you, let's let's say in the fall, you, Uther Uther receives word from Prince Maynock and what Prince Maynock did to Praetor Siagras, and Uther's like, fine, fuck that guy. <laughs> fine with me. Oh, man. They don't care. They are they yeah. like, like surprisingly they're like okay. Uh, he doesn't really ask him any questions. He's too um, Uther. Again, like this is like your guys won't even know this, but just context-wise for us as players, uh, Uther's obsessed with becoming king of Britain. He doesn't give a fuck about the continent. Yeah. Anymore. He did his yeah, good sense. deed yeah. uh, to appease the kings of the north and Malahut, who are um, you know the centurion of the uh, the kingdom up there. Um, I forget his name. But uh, that's like a really old, old Roman fort and stuff like that. And so he, you realize, like, maybe, again, these are all intrigue roles, but just for us. This is sure. this is the reason for why he did this. He this wants to look good to the ancient uh, kings in the north who still adhere to a little bit more of the Roman ways. Uh, they're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm Roman just like you kind of thing, right? As he, because he needs to get elected. 
he needs he needs all 28 um special electors to nominate him as pendragon and is one of them a certain shit heel duke yep oh shit right so like that's the game that's that's okay that's the game uther's playing so i'm sure some of it's personal but this is a very much bringing gorla gorly gorlios to heal yeah (laughs) gorla uh cornwall i that's the easy word because why wasn't i choosing that one uh so bringing cornwall to heal is as much about getting elected as it is keeping his house in order yeah very much so okay that makes sense um wait i think i misspoke i'm not sure actually if he is but that just keep definitely keeping your house in order yeah i mean if you, if you want to look strong you can't have you can't have sure. somebody not showing up to muster frankly sure. that's just not yeah. fly. you don't do that all right all right cool so um fall events this year mm-hmm. there's my notes uh you wanted to have a feast at some point colin Put that in uh, y- yeah, the um the friends feast, right? We had the yeah. we had the Easter feast, uh, the Easter. and that was that was pretty great. But uh, I wanted to have a feast to um get an idea of where my vassal boys were feeling. Yeah. Like, um, um, for what it's worth, they were all here: Morris, uh, Barthrek, uh, Dwy. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Morris, Borthwick, Corumbus, uh, and Helid. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were all here. Okay. Uh, they and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, it, it doesn't need to be a scene. It was just something like to get their, take their pulse after a year of being their lord. Yeah. How, like, are they chafing? Are they falling in line? What's the deal there? Um, well, I mean, they're household knights. They're not. They're not bachelor, or they're not. They're not vassal knights like you are. Right. Um, right. They're. They don't. Under, uh, I think. I think. What would you say? They probably wouldn't do it in so many words and like, or like as candidly as this. But they really want to know what you have. That why the earl. They actually. They want to ask you why you think the earl chose you to be like this sort of elevated, privileged person. They're like you. You know, before before last summer, I never even heard of you. Right, or your family. Yeah, and it only took a summer. Keep that in mind. It only took me a summer now. You've heard of me, haven't you? Plenty have heard of me. And plenty more will hear of me. Just because, yeah, just because you're on our manners doesn't mean that we swear fealty to you. Not yet. And that's the, that's the, like, that's the bait that he's dangling. You're only household knights, but if I go up in the world, I could help make you vassal knights. To you. To me? That, that's the idea here. Yeah. To me, but it, what's yeah. more important, to be a household knight by yourself or a vassal knight to me? It's tough. It's um, tough, yeah. And he's not pushing the issue. It's no. just like he's uh, he's Gareth to... is not really have patience for a lot of subtlety. He's laying out on the table. I'll ask the pl- so I have a, I have a couple people who are interested in playing some like solo stuff for some of these mm-hmm. characters, and I'll ask them what they think, and I'll have them embody yeah. these characters for, for yeah. this year about that. That's really good. Um, because uh, yeah, because like right now, um. Just contextually, like being a household knight kind of sucks. Like, you know, you don't, you're basically just paying rent to Earl Roderick or technically to you because you're running it. Um, but the Earl owns your manor and you just kind of have to serve and, and privilege for living in the Earl's house. You know, it's like this, it's just a real weird situation. Being an Earl and running lands is like this weird scheme where you have to keep everyone kind of at odds, but not too at odds with each other. So, like, they don't just like kind of like, conspire and, you know, they don't like you. Um, install someone else that would be better uh so like it's this constant game of like not making making things competitive but also not too competitive and who you reward and you can't reward people too much because then if they're lazy and they're wrong and then their kids are bad then like you're you're screwed like there's like that, this, you know what i mean like it's this huge balance that makes me wonder who gareth is being put up against if that's the game that earl is playing right to put yeah. 
to put people in slight competition, the, char- the character probably doesn't know, but I yeah. I feel like there's probably another yeah. night. Maybe it's maybe it's what's his name, Fraid uh, or Tinger. Uh, which one is the one with hey, the purple Tinger. Cock for? Yeah, <laughs> Tinger. Oh no, not Tinger. Tinger. That's uh, that's Fraid. That's Fraid. That's yeah, Fraid. that's Fraid. Right. Yeah, my squire's relative. Um. Yeah. Uh. Fraid. Oh, Fraid is a Vavasaur knight now. After getting yeah. after his marriage. But yeah, no, it's not it's not great though. Okay. Um yeah, he you are kind of like his his equal. Um the difference though is yeah, you're not exactly sure. It's something you probably want to talk to the Earl next come come spring and stuff about like, yo, mm-hmm. you need to tell me more what's going on here. If I'm yeah, if I'm gonna him. if I'm gonna serve you or not, you know, do whatever you want. I'm not a cop. <laughs> but yeah. Um there's clearly like political games afoot and why you're put in here and people are like wondering this for you and what your answer your answers are just like yeah well you know i'm the rising star and just wait you just wait and you'll see and uh yeah. that satiates them for a year i will not um, throw away do you want shot. glory for this you have to spend money if you want uh glory for this uh no this this is actually a pretty private event the only person there just host at- people yeah i just hosted erwin would be the only one who isn't on my um like Oh, you brought Erwin. Yeah, like okay. Ir- everyone else's business, but Erwin, I'm just like, nah, come over. And let's yeah. have some yeah. drinks. Long time friend of the channel. Yes, yeah. especially yeah. after, especially <laughs> after pulling me out of the mud. And Erwin yeah. um, has uh, brings a uh, a gift for uh, Gareth, a scabbard engraved with foxtail lilies, um, mm. to uh, encourage you in your energy and ambition. Is uh, how he would phrase it, and he'd give this to uh, to Gareth in, in private, probably not in front of his, uh, not in front of the uh, underlings. Uh, yeah, and Gareth would be like, "Well," uh, and he's gonna go and get from a chest uh, a helmet that I'm gonna dump one libra into for fanciness. <laughs> um, it's actually the helmet that I threw at you, and I had it fancied up. A bit, um, and just gonna hold it out. Just like it's definitely recognizably was my former helmet. And just like mm-hmm. I can't always be trusted with my own head, and well, I can think of no one else I'd trust more with my head than you. Hey, Erwin, he can't help but see the humor in it. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. This is a shall remind myself of uh, our conversation that day. I think that we're going to have many such revelations in the years ahead. It's only been barely <laughs> how long ago since we were knighted. It seems three years. Though... <laughs> it's been three years, Owen. 17. <laughs> 17 long years. Three years. It seems... Uh... <clears throat> Quite longer than that, but well, I am glad that we have gone through this together. Not always together, and there's the tragedy. Mm. But forward together, I think. Yes. Both y'all check your passions for each other, bringing gifts and oh, yeah. Getting, yeah. getting each other, uh, helping helping him through uh, the his melancholia. Friday Dark again, helping soul. out, and just this moment, absolutely. That's super good. Yeah. Watch, I'm gonna fuck up the roll. It's gonna keep dropping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just gonna turn into a spiteful, two-faced bastard. Oh, you don't need rules for that, Colin. Oh, That's hey, <laughs> hey, buckaroo. <laughs> uh, awesome. Hey, oh, speaking yeah. speaking of people taking care of your head, um, I rolled an event for you, and your event showed up, Colin. Yes. It's another relations event. All right. It's an Irian. He's here. Oh. Good boy. Oh yeah. Speaking yeah. Of people who like to take care. <laughs> you take care of your head. Uh, uh yeah. chastity for me. Crap. <laughs> this is obviously after the feast, so. I succeed. Oh, you succeed. You sly dog. I, yeah, I think there's a moment at the feast. Like, obviously, he's invited over, right? 
and, and Gareth is, is, they have that m- quiet moment aside. And Gareth is like, I shall admit the impropriety of lust has crossed my mind much the time that you crossed my mind. But I have two children now. And what pleasures of the flesh we might enjoy together. Pale to the duty I'm owed, my own flesh and blood. I shan't engender them, not even for you. He wants to hold your hand. Not like romantic, like, mm-hmm. you no, know, just like in, in his hand, like, uh, mm-hmm. may, yeah. may. Okay. Yeah, gives, give, gives him a hand. I completely understand. I, uh, well, uh, I wasn't expecting this to be a parting gift. Um, he, just one moment, and he leaves for a minute and comes back and has a, one of the most expensive outfits you've ever seen. Had this tailored from you, uh, pulling some, some favors. And, uh, this will give you a plus two bonus to the next feast if you wear it. Uh-huh. For your Make three app, three app roll. Yeah, my, my new double boy's got good yeah. good taste. Yeah, your yeah your your boy's nice. got the silk connects. Feast. Got a silk guy. Double it. He's got a silk guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as a success for this roll here, then yes, you are no longer in an affair, but now you you gain a love passion for. It. Oh no. Arthurian. That's the most Arthurian thing. Yes. You love someone more when you can't have sex with them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome to the game. Uh roll three D six. That's your passion. Uh how do you spell his name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally copied it because I knew that was gonna come up. I literally did. I got you. <laughs> it's so many vowels. <laughs> <laughs> I need so many. <laughs> Why is that so many vowels? Oh God! Oh, that's a good one too. That's a fourteen. <laughs> no. that's, that's more than Irwin. Oh, no. oh dear, that's good. Who knows? You get me a nice vest, and that's the way to Gareth's heart. <laughs> yes, yeah, saving him in battle, pulling yeah, him out of melancholy. Out of that's melancholy. great. Mm-hmm. But this mm-hmm. doublet. <laughs> Art imitates life. <laughs> Does Irwin really know Gareth? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, he's right. he's super he's he's super respectful and discreet about it. Um, he's fond. Hmm. Ooh, does he have a love passion for you? Roll his chastity. Mm. No. He's. This has happened to him before. <laughs> He's no stranger yeah. to this, but you yeah. have fallen hard for him. <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> oh, oh role-playing just... games. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh you know, I... <laughs> uh, yeah. Gareth doesn't know that. Gareth doesn't even love his wife. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, right? That was like when he married her. He was like, "I shall never love you." Well, that's just so we're clear on how this works. <laughs> that's... It's very common to not love the person you're married to at this time. Mm-hmm. It's this only is, the yeah. poor who get to marry for love. There's more going on. With these roles, there's more. I, I don't know what it is yet, but there's definitely more going on in Gareth's brain with all this happening. And I'm going to sit on that for a little bit. And now I really got to think about your wife and what her plans are. I and mean, this is like, is he like a spy for her? That's what's going on. No, I don't know. I think about don't it. I feel like me. I'm the. Don't f- tell me. Don't <laughs> yeah, ruin. I would, I'll never put up the veil. Oh. <laughs> He'll stab me in the heart with a, a sword, but not like this. <laughs> yeah, move, move on to Jim. Come on, just you're beating up on me here. Oh, this oh, feels yeah. bludgeoning me. Mm. This is amazing. All right, uh, that was that was my solo event for you. So thanks for being a, a cool sport about that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, let's do uh, winter phase. Sweet. I love this game. I miss it. I missed it a lot. Oh no! Yes, this shit is just so good. Your y'all's mm-hmm. melancholy scene that was so good. That was great. 
more perfect moment. All right. Um, we already did our solo scenarios, so we do our experience rolls. Um, you all mm -hmm. have a lot of checks. I don't feel like you actually have a lot of checks this year. Uh, have... From last session, yes. Yeah, last we session. We didn't get any this session, but this okay. year I have a lot. Yeah. yeah same. So let's awesome. go through those. And, that crit yeah, on? I forgot that we'll do crit this by listening. Well. Yeah, we'll do this by listening to the sweet, sweet tunes of uh, Adam Blinkensop wrote us this song for Pendragon. Yeah. All right. So that goes up by one if you pass. No, oh, no you, you have want, to roll you over want it. To fail. Okay. So <laughs> I don't gain any more love for Irwin. Great. Yeah. Uh, oh, put mine up for. Uh, is that a crit yeah, fail? No. No. Okay. It's um. More no, you jealous. just roll over it. Okay. You can't. You can't go down when you're rolling experience rolls. Got it. Ooh. Going up. Oh, Become a little bit more vengeful. Selfish now. Oh. I am becoming a little more selfish. A little more selfish, a little more lustful. This has been the year for you for that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and I think I had what did I have? I thought I had one of the skills checked. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, and that's me. Uh, that's you created spear. You should have um. Colin or uh, Jim, your your spear thrust against the axeman should give you a check for your, your land or your uh, not lance um, spear, lance or uh, spear. Okay. Yeah, because uh, your crit crit crits give you the uh, a check. Even though I was using the lance skill. Oh, then your uh, well, your lance is a derived skill. Ah. Uh, which is why. Gotcha. Your. I think you use your Kimrick spear. Is like what it is. Because you're a Kimrick, you have this special um, mm. your weapon thing. Sweet. All right. Let's see. It's oh, another reason. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> oh that sucks. <laughs> oh, bummer. All right, and then I have battle checked. Let's see. Oh, that sucks. All right. Nice. Worldly did not go up, but I have that perma checked because of the shrine. Like it's, I get one, I get a check every year for that. Yeah. So here's or the thing. Him. Let me ask you about this question. So like the yeah. book says worldly, but honestly, I don't know about that. T to me, it sounds like you sh it should give you a check to spiritual. That was kind of what I like. I couldn't quite figure it out. It's because, because this game has switched what faith means and that stat means like multiple editions. Yeah, I if if I if I may, I have something of an idea what might have been intended there. Yeah. Uh, spiritual versus worldly has less to do with like believing in spirits versus the material world, and more um, how one expresses one's spirituality. Spiritual is you're expressing it through the church, Roman, mm -hmm. British, mm -hmm. Catholic. Worldly is uh, one expresses it more directly with the material world. Uh, the book notes that. That's why British pa British Christians have like lustful checked off because one does not just show their love by praying in church, but also by loving the all world. Physical. Yeah, yeah, the, the physical aspect. Okay, that's 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 what it seemed like to me, but then it also yeah. right. sort of seemed like a. Uh, yeah, no, let's do how that. faithful were you? Yeah, we're we're all on board, right? Yeah. The point is that we all have a good consensus here about what that is. Yeah. Then, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. then that's what worldly is. I like that definition. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Cool. Uh, we skip aging because y'all are young. But I assume we're done experience rolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to do household member survival. Dun, dun, dun. Everyone's favorite part. Just kidding. Stable rolls is my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have, yeah, let's see, I have a lot of. Let me let me filter out the dead knights on my. Is my, our squire is now. Eight, eighteen or nineteen. Okay. Plus four from starting age, so it'd be nineteen. Yeah, make sure Ooh, they. Might be... You're getting ready to age up. Yeah. yeah. Just as he's starting to get good. Yeah, it does not suck. As soon as you get a good squire and they get high up, then they, they leave. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, let's do our our household okay. checks here. So, um, want to do your partner? You want to do um, 
children in your extended family yeah okay I have well, I don't, oh wait I don't count the lords here and so I'm probably I have like 50 of these that I need to roll <laughs> wow. you don't you don't have to yeah but it's so good though <laughs> All right. oh wait, I don't uh, have to roll for Merlin yeah, uh, let's roll for my uncle. Okay, so if this was Colwyn's... He's fine. Uh, Colwyn does it... not give birth. That's what I was going to say. I didn't think that, so... Uh, so if perhaps one were to be totally chased with one's wife, because... Yeah. Is there still a chance for pregnancy, or is it like... Yeah, but you, I guess you would know it's not yours. Oh. 14. Yep. <laughs> mm. Mm. Speaking of the devil. Mm. Let's see. So Gorthron survives to four. Yeah, that's um. Yeah. That's a good roll there, Colin. Walker. Yeah, sorry. What did I, I'm trying to find where it's. You're to 14, so, so uh, I'm going to shift ping you. Safe. For, yep, there it is. Okay. Good. Let me make, let me make a note there. Um, and now I roll, roll a d6, d6, right, for... Uh... Is it even? Oh, um, roll 1d20 for each wife and lover of pregnant... Oh, uh... Okay, so I'm rolling to see how it was going. Okay. Roll an 8 plus... Yeah. Uh, roll, roll a d20. 13, healthy child. 13, just a healthy boy. No, I'm sorry. Is Evans boy? Um, uh, odds are female, evens are male. Okay, so uh, this is a male child. Yes, male child. Um, and your mom, is... their mom's okay. But I know we haven't slept together, so. Mm -hmm. God damn it, Elaine. <laughs> Not going out like your ex-husband, all right? Just to be fucking clear. I'm not getting shanked by a peasant. That's what you think, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, are we done our household member household members? Yep. Uh, yeah, all of mine are good. Cool. Uh, economics. Oh no, I didn't actually. Roll all right. Did I roll? Did I pre-roll this stuff? I actually, I. Yeah, they're fine. How many horses? We have five horses. I didn't set this up. But wait, a, hold on. Here I did. What the land worksheet? Yeah, I have a, I have that worksheet for us that tracks all the manners. We can do it that way. Yeah. Come there. Winter phase manner calculations. Or it's this one. Sorry, I, I'm <laughs> I'm the doofus that makes an automated Excel spreadsheet for tracking manners. <laughs> do it. I just want to make sure it's the right one. Yeah, this looks right. Um, bring us over here. Okay. Um, so I got Trollerton and Gunnet. So did I, I did not roll the Misfortune for this year. No. Wow, I'm an idiot. Okay. One second. Well, we haven't five. calculated basic income, steward industry, or improvement income. That's fine. Okay. Um, so what happens here... Oh, I did roll the weather. It's 17. It's already set up in there. Smart. And 16 is next year. Okay. Um, so what's... What were you asking? I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, just do your thing. Okay. So. Um, oh, income and stuff. So, uh, everyone's base manor income is 10. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin, we'll deal with your houses separately. So that just yeah. for... For the purposes of this show, just we're, you're just doing Gunnet right now. Yeah. Um. So it's ten. Mm -hmm. Um. That's everyone's always their base income. Now you would add any investment income if you had any uh things, any improvements to your manor. Uh, and that I did actually want to spend um some money on uh getting an apiary. Investments happen at the end of the year, at the end Got of the second phase, because they, they'll happen the following year when they come online. Right. And you, 
uh, you built, uh, sorry, you, uh, Jim, you built an apiary last year. I thought I built the shrine this year, and that would mean oh. apiary this next year. I, th well, I thought. Were you rush building? You got because you got that extra improvement, that ru extra rush building. You got that free oh, shipping. If I, oh, if I had the free, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You had, uh, the, you you had that extra money. Um, that's right. With maybe it just wasn't spent. For yeah, from yeah for investments that your um your your wife who passed away left you. Yes, I recall that now. Yes, then I would have if it was. Uh, that's six accounting. Already. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then I'll, I'll have the I'll take the apiary and just like rave about it at the feast. Got to awesome. get one of these. Um, <laughs> let's let's see how they went. Um, so if you could, uh, we do an improvement checklist here. When you build an improvement, uh, can you roll? You were you you weren't rated, um, so that's no. good. Roll a d20. Just don't get a twenty. You're fine. Yep, Ooh. you got it. All right. It's you got your apiary. Um, so then, I believe an apiary uh, gives you one d two income. Yes, let's see. Right. It's uh, but it costs one to maintain, so it's right. So it might pay for itself, but it might make money. Nope, just pays, pays for itself. itself. All right. Cool, but it will give you minus one to the weather. And an energetic, right? Yep, or free energetic check for next year. Sweet. Uh, your wife's industry checks. Last part of income. Uh, what is my wife's industry? Ooh. I think that's my character. <laughs> Colwyn has a zero for industry. I don't that know can't if that's be right. because they never check it. Or... Uh, they have a 17. Wow. Uh, and does uh, Elaine should have an industry check. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything written down for uh, it. Uh, it's a 12. I just roll a d20, okay. and that's what the stat is. That's what you're supposed to do for character stats when you don't know. Okay, she gotcha. failed. Hmm. Yep. Cool. So you get an additional dollar you do. Um Colwyn Colin has been spending a lot of time while you have been away um helping with um sort of like so the more of like the sewing and sort of the extra little bits around the house. Um keeping things and you got a dollar. Uh you also get an extra dollar. Uh, remember your 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 cat. Yes, the cat. <laughs> you have uh, you have that extra yeah. cat. I do have that extra cat. Come on, cat. Um, so this, we're in Chalderton here, so that's one. And then your cat gives you an addition, addition. Did you roll your cat's survival? I have not yet. I'm trying to see where I wrote it all down. But uh, yes, let's go ahead and roll this cat's survival. Oh, you did have bandits, but that's fine. I have a two. I think it's okay. I think so too. But it might have gotten kittens. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it might give birth to a litter. I'll look for it real quick. Okay, that's fine. It, it just means that your improvement income is two, so you should be get, you should be making $13 redos this year. Mm, and nice. Colin, you're making zero. Womp. <laughs> Correct. But at this point, I have 20 Libra banked. So I'm, I'm getting so ready to MVD. start making some okay. investments at the end of this. I don't have... Okay, I did not write down. An, so I realized that I have asked this for you, Colin. I have all this stuff written in here for for Jim, but not you. I'm sorry about uh -huh. that. I have to go back and look at what your manerial lux were last time. But that's okay. So we're now we do the weather. Um, yep. the, well, we already rolled the weather, so that's a 17. Mm -hmm. um, minus one for your apiary. Um, so that's cool. Uh, do our misfortunes. Um, you didn't get rated. You didn't have anything happen to you this year, Colin. You nope. had you had a smooth sailing, so that's a big old fat zero for you. Um, you, had, uh, Jim did get rated. I forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're rated, I believe it's a D6 plus one. I love this shit. I'm sorry. I just love the I love the taxes. <laughs> I love the, um, this we have to do taxes. You, you do your misfortune checks and then you do your justice checks. Uh, Manorial conflict. There we are. Manorial Conflict, uh, you were rated, which is uh, plus 1d6, plus 1 to fate. However, I believe you succeeded at your, your test to thwart them. Yeah, that was where I critted my battle. Yeah, uh, roll, uh, roll, two I, D, roll 2d6 and take the lowest. Take the two, so you get three added to yours. 
um, which is cool. Minus one for your house, so you're at 19. Uh, now we do Colin, you it had nothing happen to you, so you're just a, a chill 17. Uh, except for your commoner tests. So let's do our let's do our justice rolls. Uh, NPC justice and the in the feudal criminal justice system. There are <laughs> peasants, and you could basically do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, no. Welcome to feudalism. My um, justice is still at it Jim. improved to a nine. Jim, let's do you. So before we continue, though, I would like to point out that on a roll of a four through six of the cat, they have a kitten, and I rolled a five. You have a kitten. I've got a kitten. You have a lucky cat kitten. Nice. So cute. So uh, this, I, I demand. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess the kitten in a year. You, in a year, you gotta get rid of it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I demand justice. I realize my my chat window sucks for this. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so contestant one is a poor widow. Contestant two is a rich farmer. Ooh. Um. So a, a poor old widow and a rich farmer who's willing to offer you one Librum just to settle right now for it on his side. The, mm -hmm. uh, the the source of the complaint is that the, the farmer claims that the widow is an unpaid debtor. Um, I don't need the color of the, uh, the, the yeah. color to this part. Yeah. They just complicate things. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I like that. Um, no. so do you want to read into it and do justice here? Or do you just want to settle and take a dollar? <sighs> I mean, when I say a dollar, again, this is yeah. like five thousand dollars. Right. right. Yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, I think uh, so far, he's been pretty even-handed when it comes to uh, to justice. Yeah. I'm gonna trust the dice and see what happens. I mean, you could always just take the dollar and then roll against. I was gonna say, <laughs> like, I was like, what's stopping me from taking his dollar and giving it to her? Yeah. Let's see. I mean, maybe I'm... that's what the justice check looks like. Yeah. If you if you succeed. Right. <clears throat> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, mm -mm. that's a fail. Um, it's not too bad though. When you fail and your peasants in their care, uh, if you fail, there's no effect. There's, there's a, this doesn't affect your your fate. So, uh, wh but tell me what this like. Tell us what this looks like. Right. So you fail to do the just thing. Yeah. Whatever that case yeah. is here. Yeah, I think it's probably a, you know, I think this uh, offering the money to settle uh, in his favor is suggests the rich farmer's kind of shady. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe that there is a bit more to it than meets the eye. And, and, and you know, Orman lets his appearances kind of get the, the, uh, the better of him. You know, like, oh, this rich farmer over here. No, you can't come on. Yeah, no, take the money and, and sort of exchange. But it, maybe it turns out that uh, Earl was wrong, and the uh, the widow has in fact, uh, you know, been in arrears for several uh, long time. Something like I don't know, something like that. Something where yeah. it's not more than meets the eye. Right, and you thought it was simple and it wasn't. Yeah, not black and white. Sure, but you didn't take the dollar. Or did you take no. the dollar? No, he would have just just long enough to sort of exchange it, and you know. Okay. So you have crude justice. Yeah, you don't have a dollar. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. Again, uh, for those who might be watching, we're in the Dark Ages. We're not in the Arthurian stuff. Y'all, y'all, this is the Wild West out here. Mm -hmm. This is before. This is the this is literally the Dark Ages. This is Might Makes Right. This is the dark time. Um, this there are skulls <laughs> and mists in this in this part of Arthuria, right? So um, you're 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 more than fair to be arbitrary and cruel. And Certainly. then uh, when your when your great grandparents are around the knights of you know, or when your when your great grandchildren are on the knights of the round table, <laughs> look at you how fondly you built right. these houses with honor and virtue. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Uh, Colin. Yes. Uh, let's 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 see you. Uh, go justice. Oh, you have a rich farmer who's offered to sell you uh, for a dollar. I'll take the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna finish reading it. A peddler yep. and it's about a brawl. <laughs> nope, don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. I think I think that it was literally like kind of a drunken fight. Yeah. And they get dragged into the great hall, and this this peddler's like, my lord, he's started in the the rich guy. She's like, I'll give you one libra. Fine, get out. <laughs> Done. 
Oh, good. Oh, you know what? Y'all, I'm so sorry. I forgot about this. Uh, you don't actually roll your just against this. No. Uh, this is roll. you. You roll your uh, your co your uh, commoner. Oh, your right. Your commoner no, we passion. Did it, we did you do your like you do your commoner time. minus your hate of your landlord. That's what you roll. Oh. Right, right. Well, I still took the dollar. Uh, so <laughs> that's roll. <laughs> yeah. You still take the dollar. Uh, but yeah, yeah. You you you, you do need to roll these. The, those skills to see if you check them. All right. So which, I'm sorry. About I don't that. think I have a, a passion for my commoners. You definitely should. It starts at seven and it goes down. Or your your also your hate starts at zero and goes up. Oh, okay. All right. You so, might be at you might be at an even keel here, and until yeah. you um, build things that reduce their hate. Uh, you're you're kind of stuck there. Oh, okay, so like here on my uh, manor tab, I've got uh, hate of seven. They've got a love of zero. It doesn't look like anything's changed from defaults. My concern is seven. All right. So, so if your concern is seven and your hate is seven, uh, yeah. just just roll, then roll a d twenty. Or no, we'll just we'll just we'll just honor your thirteen. We'll honor your adjust, which is fine. Which it just okay. means you fail and you don't sure, get any benefit and doesn't change the system. Nice. Colin. My concern is six, and they hate me one. Not bad. Could be worse. Failed. Okay. No effect. But yeah, you just take the dollar. Yeah. All right. Now I got 21 in my treasury. I'm going to build so many dove coats. Keep in... Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have to spend You have to spend 1.5 times if you want to build multiple things in a year. Okay. Because you have so... to hi literally hire builders. Yeah. Like okay. you have to go steal steal or like, you know, convince other people to give you their peasantry so for a year. What I'm hearing is it's seven Libra per Dova code instead yeah. of five. <laughs> which means I could build three on top. No, I'm just gonna build um All of I'm gonna build one and then next year I'm gonna do a palisade. Uh, let's um, well, let's get to that in a, in a minute because improvements sure, happen sure. at the end. Um, so zero for your common your care. Zero for your commoner care. Um, all right, now you need to roll your stewardships. And you're rolling against your final things. Childerton, Childerton's uh, 19, Winterborn Gunnet, you're rolling against a 17. Remember, you can spend a dollar to get a steward to roll for yeah. you at 15. Um, you actually can't roll yourself. Because mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You're, not, you're not present for the year, unless you're home right. all year, then you can roll. Uh, yeah. Looks like I passed. Uh, well, okay. then it it come it's a matrix result based on uh, it's like a bloody versus based on whatever I roll. Okay. Um, you had a seventeen, Alan. This is for you. Yeah. So I got a seventeen. I rolled a one. I got a, four so. I got a fourteen. So um, I will. I have. I the tie goes to me. Um. And I got a five for you, Jim. Okay. What's I your am gonna hire. Well, it, like if if this household member improvement has gone, uh, Colwyn's. No, she's still not, or they're still not better than a uh, just to hire a steward. So I'll, yeah. I'll spend the Libra. Okay. All right, here we go. That's versus uh, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you succeed on that side. So then we go. We consult the matrix. Uh, this is some riveting Pendragon mm. action. We consult mm -hmm. the the harvest yield matrix. Uh, yeah. So there was a success for the misfortune roll. Um, that was higher than the success. So it was a tie, um, but the this, this steward's roll, uh, you you lost the tie. So it's a meager harvest. Meager harvest is uh, three quarters is normal. So um, you are not going to make your full. You're gonna make three quarters of it. So um, we go to the chart. I uh, go to Winterborn Gunnet, do meager. You earn $7.5 this year instead of your 10. Uh, that's not good. Not good. Um, that's going to be you can't afford. Yeah, you're you're not going to be able to afford your retinue and your your squire. I mean, you can I cover can, all your I other just, expenses. I can. I just eat up my treasury. Oh yeah, you just use so. the treasury. That's fair. So how how for much? Uh, I need three libra for my treasury to dump. Winterborn Gun gets ten. Or sorry, I Childerton gets ten dollar reduce. Okay. 
Still use Moon 18 in my treasury. I've been banking this because I have, <laughs> have no idea what I'm going to build. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, for sure. That's similar. So, um, then that, that thing you sent us before the game about like what exactly this, this all pays for. Yeah. What was that? Um, it's a good point. I'd like to read that out for anybody to see what's going on. Somebody on, uh, somebody, uh, a fellow by the name of Morian on the um, various Pendragon Discord and uh, forums has a really good like breakdown of what your money goes to your manor and like why things are the way they are. Uh -huh. I just wanted to read it for real quick so it because it would make sense. Um, so uh, the standard the standard manor is valued at ten librum. A knight sees seven of this. Six of the six of that seven goes to support himself, his horses, his squire, his wife, and children, and one dollar per year to spend as he wishes. The rest of those three dollars goes to pay for the chaplain, the ladies made for the wife, and three foot soldiers. Any additional manor adds one household knight, three foot soldiers, and plus one dollar to the maintenance of the family, and one dollar to spending money. That's all you need to know. Cool. So we already have three soldiers to help. Uh, well, I might be jumping ahead. Well, everyone has three household soldiers. Everybody has three household soldiers. Okay. They're not your need... extended family. Those no, they no. live elsewhere. Yeah. These are just infantry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. It turns out uh, when you're running a feudal system, you shouldn't have like four people who hate you being able to conspire together in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, spread. You gotta spread that stuff out. It also builds bonds and things with your neighbors. All that good stuff. Yes. That's all just distributing power pockets. Okay, uh, so we have done our yields. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what your carryover income is, but that's fine. Um, so if it's okay, so if we got out of ten, if we keep seven, that must mean three goes to what tithe taxes? No, it goes to your expenses. It goes to the others' expenses. It goes to oh, okay. um, the rest of your households. So okay. it, go, it goes to paying for those foot soldiers. It goes to paying your your um, gotcha. uh, chamber uh, person, and it goes to paying your priest. Sweet. Yep. All right. So then everything else after that is then yeah uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And functionally, it seems like uh, it's just a plus one per manor extra. So sweet. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're just getting four extra dollars in column. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense, because most almost all of it gets to go to Roderick. Yeah. So, uh, essentially, those extra manners are what get me through this hard year, right? Yeah. Because I was down three from what I needed. And you get four. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what's your what's your treasure? So, you're, you're all living as regular knights this year? Normal knights? Uh, no, I want to spend to live better. You're a rich knight. Uh, how much does living as a rich knight cost? Uh, I believe it's at least 10. Yeah. Okay. And that I imagine it's eight. I imagine it's double. Your light, normal expenses is four. So I imagine playing being rich is eight. Okay. Uh, Let's that's say fine. it's eight for now. That's fine. Uh, that's good, as a matter of fact, because I forgot to roll for the survival of my kids. They're not six yet. So I have to roll oh, yeah. for each of them. Were you were you um, were you rich last year? I was last year. Okay, so you get a bonus. You get like plus five to it or something. Uh, yes. The benefit of that is being rich is you get a plus three to your modifier. Uh, did you roll stable rolls? Oh wait, stable rolls are next. Yeah. Okay. God. Mm. Economics. Oop. Economics. Uh, okay, so I'm rolling. I've got two kids. Well, actually, I've got three kids now. Let's start with young Ace Win. Plus three. Oh, plus three means there's no chance of them dying. Basically. Yeah, because I'd need to roll a one, and if I get plus three, I can't roll a one. Oh, okay. So you don't even have to roll for them, in other words? Looks like, yeah. That's nice. I must be rich. Who knew? Rich children survive. Ah. Uh, sounds right. Okay. Um. So. No, there's a, it's only a plus one. So there's a chance for the, the one kid. The newborn. 
newborn is fine. Okay, all three of my kids are alive. Nice. I should probably name them all. I have names for two of them. Are you living as a normal knight, Erwin? Uh, no, I was trying to see. There was a. There's not like an intermediary between ordinary and uh, and rich. Do that. Is there? Nope. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, ordinary. He he had his year of spending and sort of living large uh, last year. But he'll go. Or, he'll have ordinary okay. times too. Yeah. Uh, what was your carryover income from the start of this year? Oh, I had like fifteen libra at the start. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I've got nineteen now with the. Uh, after her expenses like to yeah i yeah, know i'm trying to count this through uh it's looking like your final treasury this year is 20 oh wait looks like it's gonna be 22 22 okay uh so you're carrying over 15 so you make 10 now mm -hmm. but um you get to keep one of it to be whatever you want mm -hmm. uh you have no you you're not doing any improvements this year uh, I would build something, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, I know. I know what's going on. I am adding the harvest instead of. Mm. Right. Get, like, I'm, still, I'm still getting the sheet set up right. So you're yeah. carrying over fifteen dollar reduce. Um, you get your one dollar of discretionary income. Mm -hmm. Uh, so why am I saying your final treasury is twelve? I would have had plus one from the industry roll, 12, plus 13, two from the cat. 15. 15. That's yeah. Right, that would be 15. I'm, I'm seeing... Fi I, okay, I have to figure out how to make this thing work. That's a good thing I haven't released this yet. Okay. It's, an, it's entirely possible that, like, I had, like, one of the other rolls. I think, like, the second harvest was really good or something. A bunch of extra Libra somewhere. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's not, it's not the so Libra. I'm just trying to calculate how much money you should have gotten this year. Um, so you've gotten, you gotten ah. third. So your final income is 13. Um, of that 13, seven, 10 of it spoken for. No, nine of it spoken for. We have four. Spoke for. So four yeah. plus your 15 is 19. That's where you're getting 19. That's where I'm, okay. yeah, that's where I got it from. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to, should be 19. I'll figure out the math for after this. That's not a problem. Sure, sure. We're not playing Eric Eric Streams troubleshooting Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, this this works for me. Uh, gun it. I have no idea how much money you have. Uh, I after expenses. Every, I've been keeping track um, on my paper after expenses and everything. I end up with where did I put it? Twelve. Twelve Libra in my treasury. Cool. And what were you? You're building a dove coat this year. Uh, yes, and that would be a five. It's uh, cost five, so I am down to seven in my treasury. But that's going to produce a guaranteed one li extra libra each year. So, yeah. Cool. Can both of you roll me a d6 or two d6? Both of you two d6 for me. Done. Uh, four and a four. Five and a two. Probably fine. Probably. <clears throat> Gun it. And shoulder ten, you got a five and a two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right, then everyone should be good to go. Uh, we are. Just about done in manner phase and oh hey Arvin. <laughs> hi everybody <laughs> welcome we're playing pendragon we're doing the manner simulation of <laughs> the winter at the end uh we just had an outstanding session and now we get to decompress and talk about the year and uh do our taxes
our, our sweet fuel oh. taxes. I think our ec economics is done now. Uh, now we do our stable rules. Yeah. So Rule for don't... our horses. Let's see. See, see who survives. Uh, don't roll one. We're good. We've got what, four horses? No. One more horse. Uh, okay. Yeah. Horses. I think everybody has one uh, charger and three rounces. Yeah. Uh, one charger, two rounces, and one palfrey. Oh, there you go, palfrey. A one. So there we go. Looking good. Awesome. All right. I hope you're doing well, Arvin. Arvin Aleron, great streamer. Cool. Build a torture chamber. Um. Yep. So our our stable rolls are good. Oh, we don't need to worry about marrying because we've already done that. Y'all, y'all are out of that game. Uh, the mm -hmm. last things we need to do: training and practice this year uh then glory training and practice do you want to add um do you want to do you want to add five points to any skill up to 15 do you want to add one point to any skill up to 20 um do you want to increase an attribute trait or passion by one because mm. remember uh we're we're changing the rules because i don't like the idea of rolling a d6 plus one for any skill up to 15 that just yeah just flat feels like the weakest option so I think I think uh, cushioning it to be a, a smooth five is like uh, I could see that. Uh, you know what? In preparation of the years ahead, I'm gonna dump all five into intrigue. Yeah, <laughs> you're hitting the books. Eris getting ready to play the game, the great game. He's now yeah. seen seen Prince Matic playing it, and he goes, <laughs> "I could be better than that." Yeah, that little shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's been like sort of how I'm playing Gareth. He meets people and decides whether or not he can do better and like that's just how his brain works he's like okay i'm gonna like it if i see the earl fuck up i'm gonna try and be the next earl that's just that this is how life should be for me yeah no that that makes a lot of sense yeah he's a right. okay piece of shit. yeah 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 no i'm good with this um <gasps> he's Getting ready to ba get backstabbed by. Oh, I just lane. realized it. Oh, I just, I just realized who your, uh, who the who's the father of your son. Be fun. Anyways, <laughs> I think I'm gonna raise my. I did uh, name my son too. Ulfilas. Why can you write that down? That's good. Ulfilis? Yeah, Ulfilas. It means wolf. Because that's how he sees this kid. All right. I raise my energetic. Okay. What was your, um, Okay. We can have to trade by one. That's... Actually, uh, I'm going to change it to Wolf Yas. Uh, that's a more, slightly more Frankish version, but I know there's Duke Wolf Yas, so I don't want to confuse them. Wolf Yas. There we go. Wolf Yas. That's how I pronounce it. Wolf Yas. Love it. Adding them to the spreadsheet. Yeah. You know, I'd yes. never do spreadsheets for games except for this one. This one just yeah. Made it. <laughs> I'm surprised. You seem like you're just made of spreadsheets for games. I usually use them. Big just spreadsheet like, uh, energy. Yeah. I mean that tracks. Um, and do you have the the names of my other kids? Because I did write those down. Uh, I mean, they're in the spreadsheet. I just they're, okay. they're not organized by you. Garrett's baby, uh, Glessig and Aswin. Yep. Um, I have. Oh yeah, I have I have Eldred and and Guern's baby. Your your uncles, your two respective uncles' babies. Yep. Cool, A lot cool. of babies. Right. Yeah. 
second so secondary cast coming in yeah i know it's gonna be so good in the anarchy it's... period and stuff like all God. these kids Ugh. yeah yeah i'm so excited this game's a very slow it's like a garden man this game is like a garden you just gotta wait uh cool so calculating glory um so you get 16 every every uh every trait and passion that is above 16 you get uh, uh, one glory, uh, one one for one for those. I still only have a bonus of one for my like I I am still stuck. All my stuff keeps waffling back and forth. Nothing gets pushed to, to sixteen. Well, you spend five on intrigue. I'm not. Look, <laughs> right, so got the two Fuck. fair. <laughs> um, and there there is a there is a mistake on the sheet that I want to be clear with you all. Mm -hmm. um, the the chivalry bonus that you receive upon getting, uh, I think I think it's something like eighty uh, points. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not eighty; it's ninety six because that's because it's six times sixteen and not five times sixteen. Gotcha. Yep, got it. Um, so it's it's just a con. It's just a an error that's been around forever. Okay. But um, keep, keep make a note of that. Um, once you have that, you get an additional extra. I think 100 glory a year, and you get plus yeah. three armor. The armor of Sweet. honor, yeah. Yeah, because you're it's, just, yeah, radiant. Goals. It's like collecting a set of like legendary gear when oh, you're yeah. uh, the the perfect religious knight virtue. All right, let's see. So two for my traits and passions. It's 60. Oh wait, no, it's more than that. It's no, it's equal to the the number. So it's like if it's if you have a 16 in it, you get 16. <sighs> Oh, okay. That makes number one. It makes a lot more sense. So I've got. Yeah, that's how you get. That's how you get to ninety six. Yeah. Okay. So I've got loyalty seventeen, hospitality sixteen, hate Saxon sixteen, and then uh, valor and modesty at sixteen. So you have four. You have four stats at sixteen. Uh -huh. Oh my god! You're doing it. You're playing the game. Look at you. You are. You are the template. There we go. we the template. are playing different games <laughs> at the same time, and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's very good. It's great. Yeah. It's really so, great. So, um, what's that? Four times? That's like 64? Yeah. yeah. 16 times yes. 4? 64? Yeah, 16 times 4. That's 5, because I've got, I've, got I've got 16 times 4 plus a 17. Oh, you have a 17 in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 17 is my loyalty yeah. to... Tutorial character. Yeah, to Roderick. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, it's 16 glory per... 16 no, any any no. any trait or passion above 16 you get the glory equal to what it is got it okay but so it has 16, to be yeah so at 16 you get 16 glory at 17 right. you get 17 okay exactly yep. yeah it okay. starts paying dividends for being yeah. that so this is 81 glory from those five wow that is That's more good. than twice me yeah uh the downside to this though is that you are now known for these things Right. And I yeah. need to write this down because this is the first year you've had all of those, right, Jim? I had no, I had them last. I think I had them last I'll, year. I only had modesty check. written down. For, I had modesty and valorous written down for you as your two 16s. I had, I know that I've had loyalty at 17 for at yes. least one. Yeah. Um, I, you oh, have loyalty, oh, cool. hospitality, and hatred of Saxons. Mm -hmm. um, but then you had, then I also had modest and valorous as your other two. Mm hmm. Gareth, I just have energetic uh, at 16, honor at yep. 19, and hospitality at 16. Yes, then that's it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I go back and just look at your all's character sheets and just double check the math here. But I keep that in my notes. So when mm -hmm. I prep, it's right there in my brain at like the top of the list of the things that you're all good at. So I can yep, twist yep. the knife. Yeah, yeah you do. Awesome. Uh, anyone pass a 2,000, 3,000 threshold? Uh, I should. I'm. I will work it. Uh, let me. Just, oh God. Sorry, sorry to keep you all for an extra thirty minutes. Not a problem. Okay, I'm at nineteen thirty. So oh, you yes, absolutely. I, yeah, I absolutely cross. Cool. Um, add I, immediately. Yeah. Immediately add one point to any attribute, trait, passion, or skill. Attribute. I'm gonna get swole again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> constitution up to fourteen. Nice. Yeah, uh, keep in mind, when your constitution and your strength start taking hits, uh, your damage goes down. Yeah, uh, that uh, that's what happened when I got crumped during the uh, the river raids. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I don't want to lose those. That felt bad. 
I don't like feeling bad. Yeah. This no. game is broken. <laughs> no, this game is kind of broken. It's so good, though. Good game. Factory last two. Oh, I got 333 glory this year. Nice. Living the dream. Yeah. Yeah, but you're like, you're literally at odd pace for a thousand glory every three years. That's that's pretty tough. Hope you don't die. Yeah, better that's than real good. Yeah, you're making a name for yourself. 336. Uh, Chad wants to know what our glory totals are. 2,336 for Erwin. Uh about to find i'm still adding stuff up i just crossed so it's going to be about 2000 plus another 200 so i'd say 2200 or so nice perfect okay then um then i needed to do some prep for this year of everything that happens yeah. um, i also need to go retroactively run some solo events for people for last year uh, so this is nice. Um, we're going to be yeah. off for a week, everybody. Uh, it's the holidays next week, if you don't know. Uh, <laughs> I will be oh, traveling, no. but then we'll be back on the 30th for, yeah, for more so... Pendragon on the 30th. So I'm sorry we have to miss another week. Uh, this is this. Look, if I could do anything, I, I, want, I want to run this game as much as I can and not miss any weeks. I love this shit so much. <laughs> this game gives me so much life uh, and vigor uh, in a way that I've never had from a game before. Yeah, I played a lot. It's of really games. astounding. It's really astounding. Like it's it lives up to every uh, bit of hype that I've uh, I've read about it, and then some. Like yeah, yeah At this is one hundred percent. Which is uh, now I'm it's dangerous. It's like the opposite of don't meet your heroes. <laughs> you already got the book. <laughs> there are only two copies at PAX unplugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim like posts that in our Twitter chat, and I was like, where the fuck did you get that? Yeah, I hadn't seen it at the Chaosium <laughs> booth. It's very good. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. Uh, let's just do some quick outros then, y'all. Uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out and playing the game. Thank you, chat, for for hanging out and and watching us uh, just get into huge amounts of trouble. Oh yes. Jim, yeah. start with you. All right. Uh, yeah. So I am uh, WebDM Jim. You can come check us out over on YouTube, where we are making Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop uh, RPG videos. Uh, yeah, there's that. And then uh, I'll be back next year on Kobold Press's uh, channel playing my Trollkin uh, Ranger, who, I don't know, you know, it's a D&D character. So there's a lot of shenanigans, a lot of uh, getting into trouble, a lot of making the other party members freak out. And then, you know, slightly saving the day, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, check them out. That's good stuff. Colin? Uh, I'm Colin Volcanet. I am one half of the Phantom Roll Booth. We are a uh, little creative firm that do D&D, RPG, and RPG adjacent stuff. Um, right now, I am only on this show and Saturdays uh, with Miseries and Misfortunes, but may have something coming on the pipeline soon, uh, so keep tuned for that. Uh, best way place to find me is at Colinet, like I see on Twitter. I shit post on there all the time. So All the time. Like all, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, thanks you too. And of course, I'm Eric. I'm Eric Fulgaris. This is my channel. Uh, Mondays here, Pen Dragon, four to six, and then uh, yeah, Saturdays, Miseries and Misfortunes. I'm also on stuff like the Sunfall Cycle. I'm on um, Wrath and Glory. Uh, just follow me on Twitter for all that, all that kind of stuff there. Eric Fulgaris. But seriously, thank you all so much. So happy to be back. Uh, this is good. Uh, this is what I needed. I think you should expect. Um, I think I'm gonna bring on our next, our first kind of guest um, uh, performance maybe next week. I uh, will see how it goes. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm excited. It's hard to get guests on here because of the intensity of the game um, and like how to like fill people in. But I also want people to see what Pendragon's like and play play it. You know, so like figuring out that right balance has been kind of hard. Um, but I want to I want to try it. See what happens. So, uh, anyways, that's it. Thank you all so much. We'll be out of here and see you all in about two weeks.